<laughs> All right. Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of Sharp Talk. I'm Tom, a.k.a. Tom Hosting Outdoors on YouTube. I'm joined today by my co-host, Steve, a.k.a. Super Steel Steve on YouTube. Alex, who doesn't have YouTube yet. Damn it. But he does have an Instagram where he showcases his extensive collection, at Alex underscore Knifebox. I'm also joined today by Gerald, Outpost76 on YouTube, and our special guest, Jody, who runs the Big Red EDC channel on YouTube as well. If you guys haven't checked out his channel yet, you definitely should. Yeah. With, that, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into a pocket check. So we'll start off with you, Jody. What do you got in the pocket today? Oh, got to dig it out here. Um, got a couple of them. First thing I got is this Klein Tools TL29. Recently nice. got that in a... Uh, well, it was given to me by a viewer, which is pretty cool. I hope you all can see that. Is it coming through clear? It's a little fuzzy. I think it's because you have your background blur on. Oh, okay, great. Now how do I get rid of it? There we go. Is that better? A little is bit. It? The, if you click the three dots at the bottom right of your screen, it'll say more options. Then you can unblur your background. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, guys. I'm a newbie. No, you're okay. I like it. It looks like an action movie. There okay. you go. Nice. How's that? Better? Boom. Much you know? better. Okay, cool. Yeah, much better. It's a TL. It's an electrician's knife, basically. Uh, they've been around since pretty much around uh, World War One ish uh, They were even uh, given to the military in World War Two. It's kind of like a lineman's knife. Mm -hmm. It's got a drop point, and then you've got a, a walking screwdriver blade. Well, that's cool. Then it's got kind of a sharp edge right here for tripping wires and such. That looks like the tip on the new Benchmade. Nice, nice. <laughs> and that one's actually a locking blade. So, obviously, if you're going to use a screwdriver, you kind of want it to be stay in one spot. Definitely. And then I got this is kind of an ode to the sharp spot, but. Uh, to have a graded pair of frame. <laughs> carrying this for, uh, <laughs> for a challenge. Alex, I I'm sure you that. Know. Uh, the cornea is burned. <laughs> Steve loves pair of frames. Yeah, hey, look, I got one right here. It's a pair of frames. All right, let me explain, Steve. <laughs> it's, a, it's a challenge on a, on a Facebook page. I had to have a non-knife person oh, yeah. for me to carry. So that's that's what that's what that's what they gave you. Yeah, that's what I chose. So it is, what it, is. it is what it is. So what do you got, Alex? Yep, that's what's in my pocket. So I got this uh, custom knife factory sablia. Ooh. Let me uh, deploy this thing. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so sablia means uh, saber in uh, Russian. It's uh, definitely a sword. I think it's huge. <laughs> That's what she said. I must say, <laughs> you have some absolutely fantastic knives, man. The pictures on Instagram are totally, man. Oh, thanks, buddy. Cray cray shit. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of filters. It's just filters, bro. <laughs> that that new Timascus filter is doing you well. Yeah, like that one. <laughs> I love that busker. That thing's beautiful. That one actually does look as impressive in person as it does in the picture. Oh, I bet. What do you got, G? Z ZDP that actually um, that actually doesn't go dull and and. 30 to 40 feet. <laughs> the uh, loner, loner Endura. <laughs> so that one's actually performing more up to up to code, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, and I'll I'll do a whole video on my ZDP Delica. It's a uh, it's a completely different different thing than I even thought it was going to be. <laughs> Are those mermaids on your mask? I. Uh, I don't know. I didn't even look at it, man. I just put it on. They might be. 
They definitely might be. Oh, I'm like pretty sure those are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're like Lucha Libre or like Angelina Jolie in a movie. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> or maybe a mix of both. Uh, I love it. I can't unsee that. It, like, it's just, it's always going to be in my head, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you you know that Ryan caused all of this, right? Right. The whole mask thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he he was hoping that I was gonna have to do my why start of my channel video, and that then I would have to show my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mask you give your wife at night, huh? You guys role play. <laughs> oh, I mean, it could, oh it, my god, it could be. Put the mask on. You know the rules. <laughs> Lights on, mask on. Oh, my God. How this works. Let me tell you. What do you have in the pocket today, Steve? Oh, I got a Strider. Strider again? Yeah, this guy. Well, I haven't carried this thing in a while because uh, it had a... Uh, <laughs> issues when I got it. <laughs> Namely, uh, it sounded like maracas because the lock bar wasn't locking up. I just say, like, said, <laughs> it wouldn't lock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop it now. That's no good. Yeah, so I, I did a little uh, self-service on it. AKA, I pushed the lock bar to the other side, and guess what? <laughs> it locks up now. Fixed it. Hey. <laughs> that, that's not rocking today. I got, yeah, that's what I got I got my um, secret knife from last week, the little Swiss Army knife, <laughs> as well as the brand new knife for this week, the Chris Reeve Large and Cozy in single Ooh. blade. Nice. Just added the fresh lanyard to it last night, the, the blue-green that matches the lanyard bead on it and is, matches the um, thumb studs as well. I'm really, really digging that knife. That's my favorite one in a long time that I've had. It's ridiculously beefy. And Kosi is, I mean, I have a 25, which is like a... Same like a, deal. Same it's like, deal. It's like, it's like an Kosi with Down syndrome. It's like, not, <laughs> you know, like not quite there. But I might, last night. that might have to be my next Instagram caption for that knife, Steve. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> then Chris Reed's going to contact you like Rick Hinder. It's fine. Hey, anybody, anybody, hey, Reed, call me up. Mick Strider, you want to hit me up? Hit me up. We can talk. I'm not like these guys. Hey, I wanted to talk. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, that's, that's all I'm going to say about it. I would love Hinderer Knives. Gary, <laughs> if you listen to this, get at me. I want a Mako and Rex 121. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's everyone got that's new? Okay. <laughs> Gerald, what you got that's new, Steve, brother? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing that's mine. But this wonderful masterpiece of quality control from Spyderco. <laughs> Uh-oh. Dude, look, er everything, everything about it, fit and finish-wise, is good, okay. except it has a giant, a giant dip in the blade. On the show side, straight down from the logo, from the spine all the way down to the apex. Wow. So the bevel in the bevel in about a three quarter inch spot here dips down to less than half the size of the rest of the bevel. What? What? So that that that's never gonna go away. No, that's not good. I saw your post on that. Yeah. Well, I I don't know what Ken's going to do about it. I don't know if he's going to send it back, send it to Spyderco, or what he's going to do. But it's, I mean, you can, dude, I just looked at it real quick last night. Well, first thing this morning when I looked at it, I noticed it right away. I felt it, and I was like, get out of here. It's so bad you can feel it. Wow. <laughs> You're going to get the fanboys hating you, too, now. You're going to jump on this bandwagon with me. It's a two-seater in this car. I mean, Look, and you know, some somebody said on my Instagram, well, you know, they're they're hitting a ninety-one dollar price point for an American knife. Dude, I've had tons of lightweight manics, and none of them have ever had a a fucked up grind like this. Seriously, it doesn't matter what the price point is. That that shouldn't be like that. Exactly. 
This CRKT is <laughs> even grinds. <laughs> yep. It's like a $5 knife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 27 bucks. I don't think I've ever felt a dip knife. in the grind. Ready? Oh, I've seen it. I've never seen one. I, out of all the knives that have come in the shop, I've never once seen it. Dude, uh, wait, wait until you guys see that Curtis fix blade that Josh, that Josh got in. This, this is nothing compared to that thing. That thing is so bad you can see the dip in the center of the blade. Uh, it's that bad. That's wow. rad. <laughs> Yikes! Like, like Curtis Custom. Yes. Like yes. Curtis F3, that guy? <laughs> like that guy? Yeah. yeah. Some, some, <laughs> some, like, outdoors fishing geared fixed blade thing they came out with, I guess, what Josh was telling me. And it's about a $125 knife, and I swear to you, it looks like a 10-year-old made it. <laughs> Yikes. Dude, when you, when you <laughs> hold it like this and look... Like, when someone hand-ground that thing, the center line for the apex is off, like, like two-thirds of, of the space for the stock thickness is on one side and one-thirds on the other. The whole primary grind is completely off-center, and it dips in in the middle on both sides. Mm. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see the review on that one. Oh, <laughs> man, it, it's, that, that whole thing is a mess. <laughs> What about you, Jody? You got anything new in? Uh, well, that TL29, uh, that one's pretty new. Um, I just had the the Mass Drop Duhar Kabuto in for review. I dropped that yesterday. That was kind of that was kind of the precursor to the live stream last night. Um, where where do we draw a line at form over function? Kind of yeah. sort of type of thing. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at one of those, but um i mean it's a wee built knife so i mean it's it's built very well there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but that knife is a knife for if somebody was looking you know for a duhar knife but can't afford duhar knife money right that's what that knife is for because it, i would buy that knife and put it on a shelf because it's horrible to carry absolutely horrible i really saw I hate to say that but it is well, Banther247 kind of said the same thing about it. <laughs> he didn't even do a whole review. He tried to put it in his pocket and get it out, and he just called it. His review <laughs> was literally, I'm sorry, I can't carry this. It sucks. Bye. That's pretty much exactly what I did. You know, I, when I get a knife in, I do my go over, you know, and, okay, let's see how this is. And I put it in my pocket, and I was like, yeah, this is not going to happen. <laughs> it's the same thing. Because, well, for one, the, the pocket clip posts are stacked. They're straight up and down. So it, it wants to kick out in your pocket. So it wants to take up your whole pocket. I'm like, no, that's no good. And plus, they stand up. I swear to God, those things stand up at almost a half inch off the knife. It was just something crazy. I mean, it wasn't that bad. But they, they, those things stand up. It was at least a quarter of an inch. I think it was just over a quarter of an inch. It looks it like looks at least yeah yeah and i mean so that that would be a safe queen if i if i had safe queen that would definitely be one and so i can say hey i owe a do hard i own a do hard design knife cool yeah you know box check that would be it i think the carbon fiber looked pretty nicely done on it but it the was. overall the like overall said, shape is nothing. so weird Nothing against the construction of the knife. It was well done. Like I said, it was a wee knife. And I mean, whether you like wee or whether you don't, we make some pretty solid knives anymore. They just do. And yeah, that part of it, fine. But the whole EDC aspect, no, not even remotely. Not even close. No, no, not even close. Do you have anything new, Alex? Oh. So I, you guys know we were chatting a lot, uh, yesterday, and then uh, I was like, what do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of that? Yeah. So I ended up buying a uh, – there's this guy I've been eyeballing for at least a year and a half. I never bought his knives because I was busy buying something else, but I've been wanting to try uh, Alexander Cherbikov. And Alexander Cherbikov is a small knife maker out of Russia. He's gaining some popularity, 
And uh, there's this website in Finland that's called Lamnia, and uh, they were selling really nice Cherbikovs. So I ended up buying a model called the Ruski in uh, S125V. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. That one's going to be awesome. And then um, since I sold a couple other knives, I figure I'd just flow the money back into the collection. And I bought his other model, which is kind of a flat-looking knife. Um, it's, it's weird, but uh, I think it should be pretty interesting. It's got a laminate uh, D2 Sanmai blade on it. And uh, it's called the, the Stris, is how they say it in Germany. I don't know. But um, that should be cool, too. So I, I end up buying both of the ones that I was asking you guys about. <laughs> when in doubt, just get them both, right? <laughs> ah, screw it. I'll just get both of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I like, and then get rid of it later. Spider Co., that drunken piece of crap, sold fast. Yeah. The drunken, yeah. The Spidey Chef's uh, Down Syndrome brother. So uh, <laughs> I actually think the Spidey Chef is a much better knife. I actually still think I might buy one one of these days when, uh, whenever. Yeah, man. But uh, the drunken was a no-go for me. I know Tom likes it. I know everybody's raving about it. Nick Shabazz likes it. Um, I like the custom original one, the the. The Sinkovich Pelican is a very, very awesome knife. Um, but I'm not, I don't know. When I got the Spider Co. version, it had very nice milling on the titanium and on the um, carbon fiber. Uh, the pattern's really cool when you put it in different angles. The milling inside, all the pockets were really nice. It's like when they, when they did lightning pockets on the inside of the titanium, they actually spent the time to make it aesthetically pleasing, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, washer knives, I love washer knives, but when I got this thing, the action was subpar. It was very sticky. And on top of that, the uh, detent was so weak, I mean, I could shake this thing loose with, uh, I had to have to try to shake it loose, but not too hard. So for me, I love the blade. The polish on it was nice. But um, Spider Co. Drunken is a no-go for me. Uh, I'm sure somebody else will enjoy it. And uh, I, I did take it apart, clean it, polish the washers, got it to uh, have some nice action. Uh, but I still don't like the knife, so I ended up selling it anyways. <laughs> I don't like it, so what's going on to the next guy? I tried everything. I try to like it, guys, but no thanks. Yeah. My example of it just came in at work, and I had some. I have some mixed feelings about it. I really do like it overall. It The, the milling is insane. Everything on it looks really, really good. Um, the machining's great. That's yeah. That's what it is. The machining is, is, is awesome. The My detent problem. is... A bit on the light side. I know I can flick it out or put or you know shake it out if I if I really try to. It definitely wouldn't work for a flipper, but for a, like a, a thumb hole opener, it will work. Um, the same thing that everyone else is complaining about. The pocket clip isn't really the greatest. There is a hot spot and on the very edge of it, and um, there's not enough clearance to get up over top of your pants. I know I could probably fix that by bending it out, but. Well, yeah, that's what Dr. Franke and uh, Nick Shabazz did. They 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 basically loosened the clip, mm -hmm. faced it the other way, and then bent it out to yep. kind of bow it. But even that being said, the thing gets stuck on the lock bar release. I mean, like in your yeah, pad. and so, uh, I feel uh, Spider Co's done this so many times now. I feel like they should have learned from that. They they, they did that on the Swiss buoy. Pocket clip. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> yeah. It's they invented like the pocket clip. Building a car that doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. No, I don't <laughs> they, understand it. It doesn't make sense. Here like, was my big thing about it, though, is it's still a Spyderco. It still very much feels like a Spyderco. It does not feel like a four hundred dollar knife to me. All I mean, the machining and I understand everything that goes into it makes it a four hundred dollar knife, but there's just it lacks that specialness that a four hundred dollar knife should have. Tom. 
When you yes. got your Nkosi, right? What was that four yep. twenty five bucks? Four fifty. Four fifty. Did you have to rebend the pocket clip? Fuck no. No, you don't rebend the pocket clip on four hundred dollar knives. Nobody and al does. Also, I'm just gonna say it. Chris Reeve knives have the best pocket clip in the industry. It is fantastic. Ever. That thing oh, is the biggest design pocket clip in the history of pocket clips. It's Fire. so simple. It's just oh, it's gorgeous. I love it. I actually replaced mine on my Spenza. That is sacrilege. What is wrong with you? I Which one a, did you put on it? I put a Rips Garage uh, zirconium clip on it. Oh, still sacrilege. With that mouth, good God. <laughs> <laughs> I like their little um, their Hawk pocket clip. That one looks really cool. Yeah, that's cool too. But I don't see that being as much of an advent. Like I don't see it doing anything special over the stock clip for an additional fifty dollars. Yeah, I, I just wanted to dress mine up because I, <laughs> if I'm going to spend that kind of coin on a pocket clip, I'm just going to get the millet milled one. I actually like the ribs garage better than the millet. Oh, really? I do. I if would you, like it. If, if, you go if you go time ask us, I say go millet. Um, now, nah, you know what? I, I, I go ribs all the way. I, I'm a ribs mm -hmm. fan. Ribs garage is... Uh, Pretty good to go. His customer service is good. That's the same clip I have on my uh, my Spyderco Techno Two, yeah. and it, it's it's so nicely contoured. It fit perfect. I mean, I've never owned the millet clip, so I don't know. Almost like it should have came with a knife. Yes. <laughs> it was fine, bro. The wire clip was fine. It's so. Here's my issue with that: is that the wire clip. Right, the whole frame is stone wash. Then mm -hmm. you got the wire clip, right? And mm -hmm. then you got these two barrel spacers that are green, which happens to be my favorite color. But with the barrel spacers being green, there's no other green anywhere on the knife. Mm -hmm. So then when I hit up Rip's Garage, I'm like, hey, are you making a pocket clip for this thing? He's like, yeah, I'm going to make some titanium ones. I'm going to make a couple of Timascus ones. I'm like, what about an anodized green one? He's like, uh, nah, I'm not sure about that. And then two weeks later, he makes a green one. <laughs> oh, I bought one. I was like one of the first guys to get the green one. And it actually like matched up pretty well to the knife. I even bought green uh, hardware from a guy in Australia for my Techno 2. So whenever that arrives in like four weeks or whatever it is, then I'll put that on, and then the knife will look nice. There you How, go. About, a green, how about a green clip? That's the dumbest idea I ever heard of. Two, Two weeks later, years. green clip. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because, you know, like, he, he kind of told me, like, uh, nah, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. And then as soon as I posted a picture of my uh, Techno 2 on, on Instagram, he fucking ripped my picture and put it on his site. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, what, wow. what's the name? Uh, Rips Garage. R I P P. R Rips Garage. You're a bitch. He's <laughs> cool. He's cool. He's bitch cool. Move. He 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 gave me the credit for the picture and everything. He's cool. But um, but yeah, obviously the green was a good idea, right? Definitely. So, <laughs> moving along. Who did some? Is, is there anybody we've missed with uh, what's new? I don't think so. Oh, oh, oh! Before I forget, <laughs> can't can't leave out Kurt. Kurt sent this to me as a gift. Is that a Tucson? Yeah. I I I don't know what model it is. I really don't. <laughs> the same one that I. It's sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's not my style, but I I don't know what is. It. What it is about it, I love this thing. That's it awesome. Almost looks like a Terrazula. That's what it I does. thought. Mom, it's really That's exactly what I thought. Sleek looking nice. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I I think you saw Jody. This does have some ramp on the clip. Not a lot of ramp, yeah. but at least you can get it in and out of your pocket without really fighting with it. Yeah, those ones I had. I mean, they had a three out of the four head ramp. But even still, they were just 
man, they were just terrible in and out of pocket. Uh, the knives, I love the knives themselves, but just the darn pocket clip, getting them in and out of the pocket, it was a pain. Hmm. Yeah, Not and I'm, I'm going to 12, 12C27, a huge step up from that D2 they used. Yeah. All right, with that out of the way, what has everybody sold recently, if you guys have sold anything? Oh, 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 me first, me yeah, first. Yeah, so I would say Alex could go on for about an hour. <laughs> Spiderco Drunken, goodbye. Yep. Bye. Uh, going Gear Exclusive 20CV Benchmade 940. Uh... And I got a bunch of other shit for sale, so if you guys see me on uh, online, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said fifty percent off, fifty percent discount for any of our listeners. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did sell something else. I forgot what it was. Oh, 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 oh. CKF Awesome. I sold that for like that one. I sold fifty percent off, dude. I sold that yeah. thing for like two hundred and. 75 bucks and it was a 420 dollar knife it was brand new in pouch so mm. i'm making deals boys come on <laughs> I'm making deals OBO, guys. OBO. he's freeing up the funds for bigger purchases t-y-d to your door <laughs> <laughs> oh bro oh bro <laughs> anyone else have anything they've sold recently? Well, I have all those knives of Mike's, and I did sell a new S110V PM2. That's the one that you just did all your famous cut tests with. No, I I, <laughs> I sent that I sent that out I think uh, a week ago to Neves Knives on Instagram to use nice. for a while. Yeah, nice. I actually just sold my small Sabenza in Singo to fund the Nkosi. I never thought I would do that. I liked the small Sabenza so much. And then I had a buddy of mine put a large Nkosi in my hand. I'm like, that is it. That's the one. That's what I want. And so some knives had to go to make make some funds for this bad boy. With that out of the way, we got, I don't know if we have knife news this week. I know Alex has a bunch of knives that he wants to talk about. Yeah, I didn't really do too much knife news today, um, but I thought we'd have some fun talking about knives. So the way I usually do this segment, guys, is I usually just kind of pretend to be a shopper. I'll go on Blade HQ. I'll go on Knife Center. I'll go on those popular sites, and I'll just kind of scroll through like we all do uh, to when we're shopping for knives. When you got the itch, right? Like Definitely. That, that heroin crack <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and if I see something worth talking about, good or bad, then I'll go ahead and uh, mention it. So the first one I'm going to start out with is this knife I saw called the Kershaw Decibel. Have you guys seen that? I have. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's a Kershaw paraframe. Yep, 100%. <laughs> I didn't like it. It's a Kershaw paraphrase. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, what is there to say about this thing? Like, what was the idea behind the... Um, I mean, I will say the floating pivot look is kind of cool. Yeah. Now, uh, what, what I got to say about it, I'm going to steal a line from Nick Shabazz here, and it looks like it has the ergonomics of a condom full of Legos. <laughs> Ooh, shots That's fired! Nick. That, that looks awful. Nick. That is a good one. Uh, looks smart. Let me see here <laughs> on this thing. So, oh man, I don't know what to say about this. There's really not much to talk about this thing. <laughs> Does anybody have no. anything to say about this? Thing? No, it's just bad. No, it's just another it's a one. It's shop pair yeah, I don't. Kershaw, they about seventeen like a year. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I admire Kershaw for trying to um, come up with some, uh, some new looking stuff this year. At least it's not like ZT, 
Uh, <laughs> ZT's uh, recycling every single can they have in their backyard right now into... Uh, yeah, ridiculous. God. I mean, so they redid the 850, right? Yep. The 850 does look better than it used to, I think, all blacked out like that. I'd agree. Right? I mean, yeah. the knife does look a little bit cleaner, but it's the same damn model. It's just the same model. <laughs> yep. Same the, damn the model with, that they just discontinued. I was telling oh, Gerald, oh. I'm like, I don't even think this is worth w wasting podcast time on, but yeah, no, no. <laughs> and they added, they added that wonderfully soft 20 CV steel to that exclusive. Yep. Has anybody, uh, have you sent that to Kurt or anything to see uh, what ZT20 CV is testing out at? No, but this will be going. Oh, I like that knife. Actually. I always have liked the design of that one. That's yeah. the Rexford. What's yeah, the number? I like. What did you say? What model is that one? The number nomenclature. Zero eight zero four CF. That's what yes. I thought. That is a good looking knife. The glow in the dark. No, no. <laughs> no the, that was before they had their glow in the dark carbon fiber buyout. It's oh shit. yeah. That was a glow in the dark. So, yeah, then there's that 0452 in Glow in the Dark. Now, let me ask you guys. I mean, I know Glow in the Dark's cool and all, but, but what, what is the purpose behind a knife scale glowing in the dark? Because are you going to you really cut something when there's no light anywhere or anything, like you can't see? Or is it like because you can't see it's in your pocket? Like, what's, what's the purpose of Glow in the Dark? Here, here's the thing that throws me off the most, right? It's the scales on a what? A pocket knife, right? Right. Okay. For glow in the dark, it needs to charge. It needs sunlight, right? Yep. Right. So they market it as, you know, if you drop your knife at night, you'll be able to see where it lands. Except for the fact that it's been in your dark in your pocket. pocket. <laughs> it's not <gonna> <laughs> yeah. so, so you got to pull out your O-light, charge up your, your, your knife, and stick it back in your pocket in the hopes that you might lose it. Or, or find it with your O-Light, then charge it up for fun and stick that bitch back in your pocket. It's the dumbest thing I've ever... It's like ZT calling us stupid. That's how I feel. ZT's like, you'll buy anything, guys. Watch this. Hold my beer. You know what they need to do? They, send, they need to send you one of those little keychain black lights, like they <laughs> did with the nuke. <laughs> there you go, so you can charge it up and then... There we go. That's, That's a way better the idea. Just include a flashlight with your knife, ZT. Just put a flashlight in the box. We don't need the shit to glow, all right? And, and Seriously. If you watch them at, like, SHOT Show and stuff, they'll, they'll, they'll charge it, and it fades in about four seconds. It like, instantly. oh, yeah, yeah. Instantly, instantly fades. Here's my yeah, thing no. with, with the ZTs recently, too, is they're bringing back the sprint runs of knives that they literally just discontinued. Yeah. What? Yeah. I feel like they just had extra blades to, to put on knives, and then they had that giant buyout of glow-in-the-dark carbon fiber, and we're like, how are we going to use this? Uh, oh, we'll use it on the old models that we've already done before. It's the Rolling Stones effect. Just keep doing a goodbye tour, a farewell tour. This is our last tour. This is our last tour. They're going to yeah. keep discontinuing yeah. <laughs> so cool. it for ages, man. My grandkids are going to see an 805 CF with, like, plutonium. Here's my question, though. Here's what I'm thinking. Have Has ZT run out of designers to work with? I think so. Does nobody want to work with ZT anymore? I think you're onto something right there. I think you are, too. Because they need, why would they need to get with some of these newer, smaller, up-and-coming makers who would benefit from having their designs put on a large-scale production knife like that. These bigger designers are already selling so many of their customs are already working with other companies like Hinderer, Sinkovich, Rexford, all those guys. They don't really need the, the royalties from that. Rexford's selling his knives for 5 k a piece. Do you really think he needs it? But you know what? It's extra income, though. I mean, look at the guys that they got before. They got RJ Martin, Todd Rexford. Yeah. Dmitry Sinkovich. I mean, these are heavy hitters. It's It's just incredible to me that... All of a sudden, this year, they flopped, you know? What, they got Emerson, yeah. and then they got that little... That ugly little stubby series. thing. Or, yeah. or ZT's just tired of paying the royalties for some of these bigger names. That's hey. what I was going to say. I don't think they want to pay the royalties on it. Yeah. 
maybe that's what it is. And that's a big mistake on ZT's part because um, CT was hot a few years ago. And then now look at him, you know, like everybody's saying the same thing we are. By the way, we're talking about Moonglow. Look, 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 look. My Sablia's got a uh, Moonglow. <laughs> <sir. laughs> Adam Edge Sharpening says Glow in the Dark lets people know that you're four years old. Yes. <laughs> I still like it. Somebody said something about RJ Martin. Um, there's a rumor, and I'm going to call it a rumor because I don't really want to believe it, that RJ Martin is the gentleman who sharpens these uh, neutrons. Right here. Uh, yeah. Uh, if that's the case, uh, Mr. R.J. Martin, you need to hang it up on the belt grinder. <laughs> I refuse, no way, I refuse your professional knife maker does the grinds on these knives. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way, though, dude. Like, it's dude. That guy's a, a legend in the knife making world. You know, like here, I yes. I charge, I charge uh, <laughs> a little moon glow there for you. Uh, now you're good. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it go. Find it. There it is. No. <laughs> CKF did that way before. All right. What's know. the next knife? All right. Next knife uh, to go on the list. Let's see. So, you know, I, I really enjoyed our time with uh, Banner247. I've been watching a lot of his videos lately. And um, he talked a lot about Ray Laconico. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at this little... Slim little guy right here. I like beauty. that. Yeah, this little guy right here. Um, it's called the Alliance Design, Kevin Foster, and Covey. Is that how you say it? Is it the anchovy? Anchovy? <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Is it really anchovy? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> yeah. I was totally joking. <laughs> it's called the anchovy. <laughs> I think you're right. Dude, it comes in RWL34. It's cool mm -hmm. little drop point, um, you know, and it's got a 3.5 inch blade. It's slim. Looks like it's easy to carry, and the blade finish is mirror pro, uh, mirror polish. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it I'm, looks pretty good. I'm, I'm I'm gonna keep an eye on Ray Laconico because it looks like he's coming out with some cool stuff. Ryan was showing one with the uh, the Croc. Remember he was talking about that? Dude, I want yes. that. That's a cool night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for showing that off and making fun of his feet wearing Crocs. Cause... I'm not. I'm not sure if I'd ever buy the actual mid tech version of it, but if any production company like Kaiser makes one of that, I'm all over it. That is unreal looking. And did you guys see the angry baby bear? Yep, I saw that. That's. I want one of those too. I'm not a Tonto fan, but good lord, does he do it well? Yeah. All those look great. Yeah, Laconico is a hot guy right now. He's he's yeah, he's, uh, he's climbing fast. He oh, yeah. his designs are just perfect for me. They're they're very simple, but there's something about the simpleness to him that just oh man, it's awesome. I think he's my favorite designer right now. Oh, without a doubt, he is by far my favorite. I mean, his knives fit my hand just absolutely perfectly. Yep. It, the keen. Oh man. The Gemini. The keen. I, I've handled the Gemini. I really like the Gemini. I have a Vanguard Gemini. I really like that. So, so yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, let me see. Next on the list. So I was kind of browsing along, and um, I thought I'd pick a high-end knife that really caught my eye. So you guys familiar with Rockstead? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Made in Japan. Yep. Here's a picture of this guy right here. Some of my grill knives. So Rockstead has released a carbon fiber um, for, uh, carbon fiber scale uh, titanium frame Higo. Now the reason why that stood out to me is because usually Rockstead knives are using a lot of aircraft aluminum. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of scary because you know if you drop that thing, it's done. Mm. Right? It's going to get a thing. I think yeah. it's seventy seventy five aluminum though. It is. It is. Yeah, it's, it's the harder that, stuff. It is, but if, you know how aluminum is. No matter yes. what aluminum, it's going down. Mm. Um, it's going down. Save <laughs> uh, Queen War. Now here's the cool part. Uh, their steel 
is a ZDP 189 at 67 HRC. That's why I'm interested in them. Yeah. That's, been their, that's been their claim to fame since they really started putting out knives. Because they were pumping out. They only do like two or three steals. Yep. It's that and that YX or that XR Y7 or YX. Yeah. And they run that pretty hard too. Well, the real thing is the blades, they mirror polish the bejesus out of the blades. Yes. Well, their black DLC uh, polish is pretty impressive too. That's my favorite so, finish I think I've ever seen. Absolutely. And it's it's truly mirror. I mean, uh, they do use a convex grind. It's not a flat grind. So yeah. that's, that's something, you know, which I think, uh, I mean, I like flat grinds for maintenance. Um, uh, I know, like, if you have a convex grind, you know, some of the tips I've been told is, like, you could put it on a mouse pad, put a little sandpaper on there, and mm -hmm. you can do it that way. Um, you know, flat grinds are always easier, especially for like KME users and such. So convex may not be for everybody, but, and, you know, definitely I'm no expert, but let me know if I'm wrong, but I think a convex edge would be tougher, right? Um, it Matt, should be. Are you talking about the primary grind or the edge bevel? Uh, primary grind. So the primary grind. Yeah. So what that is, is like, um, is he, is here. Right? You're talking about the primary? No, no. The primary grind is flat, but the the actual edge of it, I'm sorry. You're talking about the secondary bevel then? The secondary right. the yeah, bevel? Yeah. It's convex. Yeah. I think, a, um, I think a lot of guys, I've spoken to G about this before. I think a lot of guys have a kind of a mis, um, misconstrued, view, misconstrued view of convex edges. I, I've used this before. I feel like everybody like pictures like two goddamn salad bowls meeting at the end. <laughs> right. But it, Edge looks like so when you're talking about a primary grind like the flats right here whether this is flat hollow or convex is going to affect how the knife thickens up over time right convex is going to have more bow and a hollow is going to be slimmer that's the benefit now but when you start getting to that apex right there as long as the edge bevel stays the same the amount of convex that's actually happening is so slim you probably won't even notice so you see what I'm saying? If you've got a knife with an edge bevel right there, this is at 15 degrees per side. Imagine, I might even do a video on this. Here's 15 degrees per side B. Here's it convexed. <laughs> yep. It's very, very minor. So I think a lot of guys worry too much about convex grinds. Um, if you're going to buy that knife and use it, I don't, I, I don't think as far as we're talking edge bevels, uh, whether you – somehow figured out a way to hollow ground it, you flat ground it, or you ho or you convex ground it on the edge, I don't think it's going to make a damn bit of difference. Where those grinds really come into play is the primary grind right here. Yeah. Whether it's flat, convex, or hollow up here is going to make a much more that's, – that's where you're going to see the difference. But down here on that little edge bevel, I don't think most people are even going to notice. And what I've noticed too is unless you're an incredibly skilled sharpener, you're going to have a little bit of convexity to your edge to begin with. It's almost impossible to keep it – Completely flat. Unless you're super steel, Steve. Exactly. <laughs> not, not all of us are that good. Uh, that's awesome. I'm just, I'm perfect. Just <laughs> so is my way to that. Edge of my life. All my edges, my edges, my edges. When the knives come to my house, they come out the box hair with me. <laughs> all right. On Look to the next me. knife. So, um, I know it's not popular to most people. It's kind of a tight niche, but to the Balisong community, which I actually enjoy Balisongs quite a bit, um, I was looking at Enrique Pena, which a lot of people are very familiar with. He, he does anything from full customs, which he's no, mostly known for. Um, also does um, some mid-tech stuff, and he does some, what, he had the X-Series, which was done by Riate, I think. Mm -hmm. Riyadh, right? Good. Um, so for the Bali song guys, um, his custom Bali songs are about a thousand bucks. Yeah, they're expensive, but you got to understand they they are perfect in tolerance and everything. I mean, those things glide like crazy. Um, I saw that he released a mid-tech uh, signature series, Enrique Pena Bali song, and he's 
comes out, they come in full titanium frames. Um, the one that I was looking at came in uh, green micarta inserts on a titanium frame. And they're made in the USA out of M390. Uh, Very nice. And they're only coming in at about 450 bucks. Not bad. <laughs> Gerald shaking his head. With paper bag steel. <laughs> Well, you never know. You know, I'm sorry. I take that back. Not M390. It's CPM 154. I was looking at the wrong stats. Ooh, that's there. better. Now I'm buying this valley. I'm in now. Oh, and uh, it's hand rub satin, and all of us boys love a hand rub. So, if you want an Enrique Pena design, I think that's a great uh, option for those guys that don't want to spend a thousand bucks, four hundred and fifty bucks. It's much more doable. Definitely. I, I am totally green to the Balasong world. Do those guys really flip high end knives, or is that more of a collector's piece? No, Balasong guys. So I've I've dabbled into that world. Now me, I own a few Balasongs. I I sold my last high end one. I can open the knife a few different ways in a fancy way, but I don't flip, I don't do tricks, I don't do aerials that much or anything like that. I know a couple of tricks, but the guys who are seriously into it will take like, and Bali songs just like custom knives can go up, you know, which they make custom Bali songs, can go up to like two, three grand easy, no problem. Mm. <laughs> and those guys, <laughs> those guys will flip those knives. They oh, yeah. will freaking flip the shit out of them, like no problem. As a matter of fact, I want to say the Bali Song guys are more users than a lot of guys who own custom knives in general. Wow. So comparing custom knife collectors to Bali Song collectors, the Bali Song guys will go nuts. Um, so they're buying for for you, like so. When you're buying a custom Bali song or a high end Bali song, you're doing that because it's a better knife. This isn't just a showpiece. You're you're, you're buying that because of the tolerance. You're buying that because of its balance. You're buying that because it's also Dep awesome. Depends on who makes it, because there are some you know showcase Bali songs which have Sanmai steel and you know Damascus Dama steel, yeah, uh, jeweled, um, you know, but. For the most part, most of those knives have to function. They have to be balanced from what I've seen in the past. Although I'm not heavy into it. Um, but this one that I'm talking about runs on bearings and everything. So I, I would assume that it's a pretty decent knife for the money. It's like ballet song guys are like crossfit. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to ask. They'll tell you. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. You know what just, I mean? Like, you walk up, you're like, what's up? And you're like, blah, 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 blah. what's up? Like, oh, shit. You're, you're they're the valley. vegans of the knife community. <laughs> yeah, you're from the guy, exactly. They're all, like, <laughs> super young and in shape. And they you know, got really good finger muscles. And, you know, they're doing, like, kettlebells. <laughs> um, I got an Elijah Isham design knife that I thought I'd talk about. Here's this, this little contraption right here. What is that? I want it. It's called Albatross? The Abstruse, I think. Abstruse. Abstruse. Titanium. 2.8 inch blade. This is a little um, front flipper from what mm -hmm. I understand. It looks very Pleroma-ish. It, it does. does. What? It does look Pleroma-ish. Um, that's well, something the blade, that... Especially the blade. Yep. It, it it was interesting though. Um, it's under the Esham Blade Works, which is still manufactured overseas, I believe. By Best Tech, I think. Is that who makes them? I'm pretty sure. Really? Mm hmm. Huh. Best uh, Tech is the thickest knife I've ever seen in the history of my existence. Can we talk about them for a second? What, the Tursal? No, I'm just saying Best Tech in general. Well, They'll not come up in the topic today. They kind of came out of nowhere. They did. And, like, even though they did, like, I had a coworker who bought one of their knives and they first kind of popped up, and it was, like, mm, 50 bucks or so. That was some of the best flipping action I've ever seen on a $50 knife. This is before, like, Civivi and Tangram came out. They were phenomenal. 
for the price. I mean, now they're kind of falling behind and they're starting to move into that higher end market. Yep. But it's a that's a great knife for for fifty dollars. Maybe not cutting wise, but action wise. No, nah, you know what? My coworker actually buys a couple of those. Um, mm-hmm. They they do cut pretty well. Well, his had a pretty decent edge on it. It would definitely um, pop some hairs off my my arm. Yeah. So for fifty bucks, it was fifty. I think his, a couple of his were like close to a hundred bucks, but it was a pretty uh, pretty decent budget folder, which will definitely bring us to the main topic. Um, last one I want to talk about before we go there, though. The Browse Blades Pack or Pat Mac Mac Daddy is Flipper is what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Daddy, the Mac Daddy Flipper. Yeah, you guys seen this monstrosity? I did Absolutely. when you sent us the picture. <laughs> Oh my god. I prefer to unsee it though if I can. Oh, it's beautiful. Come on. Oh. <laughs> like, I up. Look at she that. walked away. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. Yeah, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> we we have ourselves a three point seven inch blade uh of D two steel. It's Advertised to be at 59 to 61 HRC. It's a modified Warren Cliff. Um, let me see. Hardware and, and clip are stainless steel. And this is a collaboration between Pat Mack, the firearms instructor, oh. <laughs> and Jason Browse. Yes. 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 100 pieces and thank God for it. The guy so, who, you know what? I'm not even gonna bring that up. Never mind. Look, look at this thing. So it's got a seatbelt cutter, guys. It's it's basically a sniper with a Warncliff blade on it. Um, not to mention, if that was that wasn't bad enough, it's got a tip up carry. I'm sorry, tip down carry. Do you know what that reminds me of? When I see that knife, I see a SOG and Smith & Wesson that had a baby, and they named it the Browse Mac Daddy. And a hate child. They had a yeah. hate child. Yeah. A bastard hate child. So apparently this firearms instructor who looks like, like the Hulk, um, hopefully he can't find me because <laughs> I'd be scared. But um, – he looks intense. And said, this is the knife I want you to build me, Jason Browse. This, this shit has got to have a seatbelt cutter. It's got to have <laughs> a glass breaker at the top of the A completely scale. unfunctional glass breaker. It's like a spoken tail glass breaker, guys. Come on. You got to appreciate that. <laughs> I, I want to know how many people get like drive cars into water. And actually, use the seatbelt cutter on their knife. I want to know the statistical value of a seatbelt cutter and a glass breaker. Because I'm pretty sure if I was drowning in a car, I would punch that window out before I ever grabbed a pocket knife. Seriously. I'd be so scared. I'd be so scared. Adrenaline would take over. I'd be elbowing the window until it broke. I wouldn't be reaching for no damn Emerson in my back pocket. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'd headbutt it before I grabbed a knife. I'd be. Well. And this thing also weighs a staggering 5.9 ounces. Fatty. I bet it actually weighs more than that. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably would say the same. But don't worry, guys. It's only limited to 600 pieces. That's fine. Thank God. Thank that's God. Probably, that's probably because that's all they're going to end up selling to begin with. <laughs> Dude, I, I had this saw at work that... On the package, it said 3.3 ounces. The entire thing was made of stainless steel. I'm like, you're so full of shit. I took this thing out of the package and weighed it. It was eight and a half ounces for a three-inch knife. <laughs> they were talking about the blade, Tom. Come on. Yeah, it was stainless steel handles with lead inlaid in them. <laughs> hey, just so you know, there's only 599 left. I'm not going to say that. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So before yeah. we get to the main topic, I do have uh, a couple comments from the live stream. 
And uh, they got like two or three small topics they want us to, to hit real quick. Um, Adam Ed Sharpening says, how do you demonstrate to non-knife people what sharp is? Aside from cutting paper and stuff like that, of course, I had a lady literally tell me, yeah, paper isn't a big deal to rip with your hands. I'm not impressed. Granted, right. she's kind of dumb. How do you sell sharp to someone like that? Right. Drag the knife right. across her arm. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> All right. I'll be, I'll, I'm going to take a five-second break. I'll be right back, guys. You guys okay. take it over. Yeah. Um, you, you, you can't think stupid, Mr. Alex, or whoever that was on there that asked that. Um, you don't. Don't tell them. <laughs> you yeah. just go, okay, and then you, that's what you do. Yep. You're like, Here, if this isn't sharp, run your finger over the blade. That's all. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. See how sharp it is now. Have her, have her run her hand over it. And if she says no, they'll be like, all right, sharp enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of guys ask me that at work, and I grabbed their arm and shaved the hair off their arm, and I was like, is that sharp enough for you? And they're like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Tell, tell me you do, like, a big patch, too. Like, a big, huge... Oh, so no, no, I'm nice. I'm nice. Just a little. Just a little. What I like <laughs> to do, I like to take a knife blade and put it on a piece of, like, printer paper flat and get it to, like, separate the printer paper, like, the actual, like, you know, pieces that are pressed on top of each other. Right. You yeah. can actually get it to shave that top layer off, and people are always like, holy shit. I would do that yeah. if I was that good of a sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> Do they, they, but then you run into the guys who are like, oh, that, that, that's too sharp. I, I can't I can't do with that. Because I, I, remember, I'm from the South, man. I got a lot of rednecks around here that, you know, they have knives that are about as sharp as the corner of this whiskey bottle. So yep. you, you show them something that can cut paper, they're like, oh, my God, I don't even know. That's just too <laughs> sharp. Right. Same I, thing. I'm going to cut damn hand off with that. I get people all the time that, that are like, well, I don't want a knife that sharp. It, it, I'm going to cut myself. I'm like, not if you act like a, don't act like a moron, you know? It, it's it's yeah, so it's, much more safe to have something that's that sharp than not. As a guy who's cooked his whole life, I can tell you sharp knives hurt a lot less than dull ones. Yes. And, and the cuts heal a lot quicker. They're yeah, a lot safer knives. to use, too. Huh? They're a lot safer to use, too. You just picked up exactly what we just said. <laughs> They're not, um, you don't want a dull knife. Yeah, so there's your answer. Uh, either drag it across their arm and tell them uh, <laughs> how's that feel, or just ignore them and walk away. All right, I got one more quick, and then we can get into um, the main topic. Someone asked, Baron underscore mind asked, you guys been using any of the newer bonded diamond slash CBN stones out there? Um... I have been testing the knee stones, the water stones, for the last uh, about two months. What do you think of them, Steve? Because I'm interested uh, in those. All right, here, here, here's an issue. All right, here we go. So I, uh, I, I catch things detailed without not trying. So here's yeah. the problem: when you buy some beneath diamond water stones, there's something he won't tell you until unless you ask him about it. And that's that because they're mounted on aluminum during the bonding process, the stones are all warped. <laughs> they're all warped. So when I contacted him about this, he said that that's a necessary evil of the process and that they're no more than two thousandths warped, right? So when you buy beneath diamond water stones, you need to buy yourself some silica carbide powder and some plate glass to flatten the stone first because they're not going to be flat. He says it does, it's not a measurable amount of difference. If you're someone who's buying diamond water stones, it is a measurable difference, I promise. Um, and because the stones need to be conditioned. He says you can sharpen them straight off out of the package. He's full of shit. You can't. They're all glazed over. You can't. You just need to buy some carbide and flatten them out. Yeah. As far as cutting, they do cut well. They cut like savages. Okay, so, um, so they do cut well, and I, I, I do see the benefit of having the ability to bring fresh abrasive when you want it. The, the thing is, is okay, so the binder in these stones, um, it's a formaldehyde type thing. Um, it's extremely hard, right? So you, you do have to buy something flat. First, they don't fish like at all, really. Yeah. Second, which is, which is a good thing. Um, my other problem is <laughs> on these small finger stones, it's not on a lot of the plates. The plates I haven't seen do this. They'll, all of them will list the grit rate, right? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, this one right here will say F400 and F800. 
So guys, buy this. And go, okay, it's a 400 grit on one side, it's an 800 grit on the other. My buddy John, JD, was like, yeah, it just feels a little bit finer, but it's pretty good stone. So I got it, and I'm like, this is, seems this seems quite a bit finer. Then on the other side, he's got some numbers, which is actually the micron rating. Ooh. So if this is accurate, um, his 400 grit side is labeled at 20 to 14 micron. That's actually about 800 to 1,000 grit. So it's really, a lot of guys are really, when they get into sharpening, they're trying to focus on grit progressions. Yeah. Um, and their bigger plates don't have the micron rating, so it throws guys off. So those are my little issues mm -hmm. with them. They cut well so far. Um, I've been using them for about a month now. They work better without water than with water. Um, so my only, but my biggest issues is that they're not flat when you get them, and he doesn't tell you that. And you need to buy silicon carbide to flatten them and to condition the stones, which he doesn't tell you about. And his grit ratings are wildly off, which yeah. seems to be a, a pattern in the the, the, the wet stone, the diamond wet stone. Mold. Guys tend to underrate their grits because they're afraid of placing them where they're at and somebody arguing that they're not as, as fine as they think they are. So just be careful. Be cautious. Yeah. Uh, Nadim said that he's used them, and he said that it was crazy how fast they cut. It took him five minutes to take M4 from 19 to 15 degrees per side. Yeah, they cut They cut well. The lower grit one, it's like 100 grit, and I want to say 320 grit is the micro size for that, and uh, they do. They, they, they rip steel off. It, it's weird. Like the, the low grit, their low grit stone, the 100 grit and 320 grit work really well. The 400 and 800 work really, really well. And then you get to the final, final stone, which they claim is a 1,200 and 2,000, but the grit rating is three micron and one micron. Hmm. So three micron, so two to three micron is the equivalent of about an 8,000 grit stone. One micron, you're talking about a 15,000 grit stone. I can tell you that this does not polish like like a, like a, like a 15,000 grit stone, but I haven't used it a ton yet. I haven't taken things that far yet. I will this yeah. weekend. Um, but yeah, it just gets a little hazy. It gets a gotcha. little hazy when you're trying to, when you, cause once you go from that 800 grit stone to this, it kind of, the, the way the edge feels, isn't all that drastic, but I don't know, more to come on that, I guess. Cool. All right. I think that's pretty much it for, for comments or questions. If anyone else has comments and questions, make sure to leave them in the chat. We'll get to them when we can. With that being said, let's get on to the main topic of today's episode. And that is budget knives in general. Um, we figured that was right in Big Red's wheelhouse. Because he, he does a lot of, uh, if you guys have never watched his channel, you definitely should. He does a lot of uh, budget knives, but he's also starting to get into seemingly some of the more um, mid-tier to, to upper-tier production knives, which is, which is super cool. But the budget knife side of thing is where a lot of YouTubers haven't really tapped into. Everyone's kind of focusing on the more expensive stuff. And um, I think he's kind of filling that, that niche market really well because not everyone wants to spend, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars on a pocket knife. And there's lots of great knives out there for under a hundred bucks. So well, it's not that they don't want to, it's just they might not be able to. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? I mean Exactly. I would love to go out and buy me a Chris Reeves knives right now. Uh, I probably could, but you know, I don't know. It's just, it's that, I guess to me, it's just that whole, it's not a matter of want to, it's can or cannot. Right. So tell us a little bit about your channel, Big Red. Tell us what your focus is on and what you like to discuss. And, and really what I think is really awesome is your Saturday live knife uh, hangout. I love that. Well, I have to, I mean... I cannot take credit for the name. My wife actually, because I, well, I was like, I really want to do a live. I want to do that. I want to talk to people because that's what I love to do. I mean, at the end of every my video, video, I say, leave me a comment because I love talking to you. I do. I love talking to people. Yeah, I want to know yeah. what you think. You know, give me your perspective. Um, it's, it's my video. I try to do, you know, the facts, and then I give you my take on it, my opinion. And you either agree, you don't, maybe I missed something. Maybe I missed something that you say, well, hey, what about this? I mean, that's what, that's what I try to do is I want to spur conversation and, you know, and 
the Saturday night, the only night that would work, because I work swing shift during the week, and I try to save as much time on the weekend for the family. So the only time that would really work is late Saturday night, which, I mean, 10 p.m. Pacific, it's not late for me, but that's 1 a.m. on the East Coast. So, you know, and she was like, well, that's, that's, only, you know, <laughs> that's the only time that works. She's like, why don't you call it Saturday Night Live? I'm like, I, I really hate myself for not thinking of that. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's perfect. And so that's kind of how it was born. But the focus of the channel, I mean, when I started, yes, it was. I wanted to take a look at budget knives. And, you know, that in itself can bring on a little bit of controversy, if you know what I mean. Um, yes. You know, so. But anyway, I was really fortunate to get hooked up with, uh, with the Apex Pass Around group, which has got a lot of awesome guys in it. I mean. Blade Banner, uh, JT's Knife Live, Banner 247. I mean, there's a lot of awesome, awesome reviewers in there. And that, that has allowed me to take a look at a lot more, you know, I can't really say higher-end knives, you know, because we're not doing any Chris Reeves or anything like that. We're not doing custom knives, but just knives that I probably wouldn't have normally done. And like you were saying, the Orca, the Keen, are those expensive knives? No, 150 bucks. That's not too expensive, but for some people it is, you know. So I still try to throw in, you know, uh, talking about Best Tech. I mean, for a $50 knife, Best Tech makes some pretty decent knives. I mean, I've been fairly impressed so far. I had the Beluga. I've got the Torpedo right now, taking a look at. That's a cool little knife. Seems to be built pretty well. So. Yeah. Hey, Big Red. Yes, sir. Why don't, you, why don't you tell them the story about the one time that you pulled a knife out on the veterans? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the way? The on way. the guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an interesting. So it was the first time I'd really ever had any experience with a wave knife. It was a <laughs> ZE. I can't remember the model right off the top of my head. Um, Ish, yeah. It was a... It was the thumb. It was actually the thumb one. And it saved on it. Because I was in an area that you have to show them what you want. have it, but they want it. You do have it. Okay, fine. So when I went to pull it out, man, it waved really nice and open. And I'm standing here with an open at an armed guard. And it just so happened, though. His first reaction was, hey, man, that's a nice ZT. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> that's shooting me. I appreciate that. I so, love that yeah. story. Yeah, that's it funny. was, it was, yeah. Anyway, lessons learned, right? Yeah, it was blasted on Facebook like Jody pulled a knife out on some arm. Oh, I know, cards. I know. I, I didn't look <laughs> down for a little while, but that's okay. You know, it was cool. I, can't, I mean, not to mention, I mean, we're talking about, you know, anywhere from 18 to 21, 22 year old, you know, military people that, you know, got a lot of testosterone running and all that other stuff. And it could have been a lot worse than it was for sure. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing is the kid goes, hey, man, that's a nice ZT. I was like, oh, <laughs> God, thank you for being somebody that knows something about knives. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, bam! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was so awesome you know and i, I could relate to that because i've had emerson's like when i pull them out not trying to you know when i'm oh, pulling yeah. a knife out of my pocket they just deploy yeah that was definitely that situation where i really didn't need that to happen and of course it did so you know <laughs> you know it happened. It happened. look the knife down Put the knife down, sir. Oh, I, trust me. Trust me, dude. The right person, I very, very easily could have eaten the butt of a rifle. I'm almost yep. positive of it. So, yeah, I mean, because, I mean, they're trained to do what they're trained to do. And, I mean, the kid was cool, though. He knew. I mean, it was only, like, the eighth time that day I would went into the security area. He knew I had the knife. I'd shown it to him, you know, plenty of times before. It just happened to be that that time it waved open on me. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I just want to say I really love your Saturday night stuff. I've sat in on a couple of them. And, man, there's just, like, a good, like, aura and, like, a good, fun, like, atmosphere with that thing. I mean, I, I love that. Good job on that. And that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing about the channel. The channel started, I mean, it was completely on a whim. It was a suggestion by my oldest son. He had a YouTube channel, and he was like, Dad, you got all these knives. You should just do it. You watch all these guys. Why don't you do it? I'm like, nobody wants to listen to me talk about knives. I mean, it's just not a thing. And he's like, you'd be surprised. And turns out, I, I guess he might have been right. I mean, you know, I don't profess to be a knife expert. Not at all. I'm definitely, you know, not somebody that, like, Gerald and the seal testing that he's doing. But I guess if I can be, I don't know, it might sound a little corny, corny I guess, but if I can kind of be like an ambassador to the community, for the community, yeah. and Definitely. find a place for people to have fun, then my channel has done what it's supposed to do. Yeah, definitely. I think you're doing the stuff that, that other channels don't do or have never done. It's just, it's completely unique. I mean, that's just because, well, and this has been, a, I mean, it's a complete learning experience for me, too. And that was another reason why I did it. Because it helps me learn. It helps me learn. Yeah. Fun is a big thing that's missing in the community. Definitely. That's why I like Big Red EDC. If anyone's watched Blue Collar Survival lately, he started with this sales guy thing a few weeks ago, and Dude. it's fucking hilarious. It, it, it's something, and he, he, he kicked it around. He's in a chat with me and a bunch of other guys, and he kicked it around, and everyone was like, bro, you got to do that again. You know, he's like, I just, I'm getting so much good feedback from it. And I'm like, fun is something that's missing in the social media knife community. Like, mm -hmm. everyone needs to take a step back and just hey, laugh, bro. have a hey. good time. Open a beer and chill the fuck out, and let's all just—you know—we're all in here. We have a, a common uh, interest, you know what yeah. I mean? L yeah. Let's all read these, you know. I tell you what, sales guy, right now, I don't care. To me, sales guy is YouTube gold right now. It is. <laughs> we're we're going to have a monitor to guess too. That one we're in the Whitney Houston song. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Was, I I have my reservations about him defacing American cheese like that, but I'll I'll save that for a different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I will actually be because he's based out of Minnesota, and I'm actually gonna be in Minnesota about uh, an hour away from him. So there is talk about a potential big race. The guy collaboration, if we can make it work, and that would be it. awesome. I would love sweet. that. Are you kidding me? That would be so cool. <laughs> we're gonna have blue we'll color on too. We can man, it's it's. I, uh, we just we're gonna try. We're gonna try. Yeah, blue color will be on the on this podcast as well um, in the future. I'm sure. Oh, Dustin's an awesome dude, man. He is. He's a great dude. And yeah. there's a lot of, I mean, like the, the, I call us our little band of hoodlums, but it's, you know, <laughs> channels that, well, and that was another thing that my son said. He's like, why do you have all these other channel stickers on your table and stuff like that? And I was like, man, it's a community. We help one another out. If you, you know, I'm not, if, because I mean, like, like I said, blue collar and, you know, woodland and, Jet Fuel, all those guys that we, uh, Jack Farm Boy, he makes some awesome videos as well. I love Jack's videos. He does oh, some editing. He doesn't like American cheese either. He started this whole war. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's the reason the cheese is in the video. You don't know. That's this. right. What, what, it was Jack's fault. I'm watching you, Jack. Yeah, and you know, I mean. <laughs> Grateful Panic and I, him and I, I mean, we just basically sat there and traded knives back and forth to help one another out when we first started. You know, he and he was big more on the traditional, you know, the slip joint side, and he taught me a lot about slip joints, and we'd go back. He'd give me slip joints. I'd give, give him the more modern, you know, flippers and stuff like that. We'd just go back and forth like that. And to me, that's what, I don't know, and, and, that's, and that's what I said. And the last, oh, it was probably... 
Oh, I don't know. But it was, I think it was right around Christmas time when our my oldest son, the one that gave me the idea, when he came home for Christmas and he's like, I said, man, I really enjoyed doing this. And I started talking about community and all that other stuff. And he's like, dad, do you realize that you were even in the military for 20 years, right? I'm like, yeah. And he, he's like, you know, when you're in, and I was a submarine vet, so small crew, so you pretty much know everybody. Mm -hmm. And he's like, do you think much? possibly? Yeah. And I was like, do you think you, you, think you were missing, you know, that camaraderie type thing? And I really thought about it, and I was like, damn, dude, you might be right. You know, I don't, I don't know. It just, you know, it, it, I, think he, I think he was on to something. Yeah. Every, it's human nature, man. Everybody's got their community, right? You got your family, you got your friends. Right. Everyone's got their thing. You right. know what I mean? This is our thing. Yeah. You, you see guys all the time from you, any of us that have a channel, Alex, Earmuff, since you don't have a channel. <laughs> Growing up and talking. Um, so those, yeah, yeah. Hang your head in shame till you start. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you guys all know this all the time. How many times have you gotten so, guys that watch your channel send you knives to check out? Oh, a couple good. of times actually. Right? Yeah. It, all it happens all the time, all over the community. Guys will guys will send not things of value to people mm -hmm. that they've never met. Exactly. All the time, just on. Pure trust because we're all in the yeah. same community. We're all in the same thing. We all say it. We, we, the the honor system that's in this knife community, this, especially Crazy. this online community that I'm very new to, blew me away. Yeah. Um, and still does yeah, to this sure. day. What I had after I tested CPM 154 for the first time, I had someone who saw my test results and was like, "Hey, that didn't perform very well." I'd only put up like four videos at this point. He goes, "That didn't perform very well." Here's my launch six. Test it. I'm like, just like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it, I, I'm like, do you mind if I like reprofile it to like the the edge finish that I wanted to to put on and everything? He goes, do whatever you want with it. Just send it back to me sharp. I'm like, all right, can do. It, 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 it's wild. So, it's crazy. It was awesome. So speaking in my defense, I tried to record my uh, YouTube video today. Did uh, you have yeah. no defense? I I tried. <laughs> so I got like 15 minutes into it. And then my grandma came out and started talking to me. So oh, that cut it. Grandma? Grandma came out, bro. Oh, grandma, it's Mother's Day. Then after that, I started from scratch. I started recording again. And then my wife uh, came in with the kid. It's all the women, right? Blame the women on Mother's Day. It's the women <laughs> on Mother's Day, bro. So soon enough, guys, soon enough. We're waiting on it, Alex. I'm going to shame you into doing this. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll get on it. And I'm, I'm not gonna. I was gonna do some fancy stuff. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm just gonna do some tabletop reviews to start, just to kick it off. Cause I just don't have the quiet time. Yeah, you gotta get used to talking to a camera by yourself. <sighs> I know. I know. See, was... I feel like that wasn't really a learning curve for you. I feel like you just started <laughs> screaming at a camera one day, and that was it. Yeah, you. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm a chef. I'm used to yelling at people. It's really. <laughs> Yeah. Yelling at a camera that has no emotion. All I see is my own face. It's really hard. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm just going to talk to the, all right, I guess I'm going to figure out how to do it. If you watch my first videos to like the fifth and sixth and on, very, I was much more subdued in the first couple videos because I had never talked to a fucking stream before. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me do it. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Powering. It's, it's liberating. Balls. There we go. Nails. Liberating. My balls knife. There it is. Balls knife. Cameo. There we go. Cameo. See all my crew. My favorite knife. I, I, I love your openings, Steve. It's always the best. They're the best openings ever. Balls. Cock <laughs> sucks. Fuck. <laughs> I have to make sure everyone understands what's happening before the video <laughs> progresses. Or else I get yelled at for parenting other people's kids the wrong way. I can't believe <laughs> that somebody got so offended over that. I'm trying to watch this with my kid. It just happened the other day I had somebody yell at me about it. They're like, you need to restrict your videos to 18 and over and such and such. 
and I just put a bunch of laughy faces and middle fingers at him. That's all I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even argue with him anymore. I just laugh. I do little laughy faces. That's all I do. Or like eggplants. That's cool. <laughs> and, and emojis. So if you guys are uh, watching YouTube with your kids, uh, you may not want to watch it with, on yeah. Steve's channel. <laughs> Proof watch your channels. Don't, yes, don't, don't. I'm sure this is happening all over America. Don't cuddle up on the couch and turn on Super Seal Steve blindly. <laughs> my um, my <laughs> favorite my favorite was when you had the you drew the picture of the balls on a piece of paper and yeah. then you had that ball knife and you're like shh. That was great. <laughs> I felt like everyone's butthole just like tightened up and they were like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, so, so we, we really got off topic there, which, is, right. which is fine. But let's get back on to, uh, to budget knives. And, and let's talk about budget knives in general. I, I think the easiest way to kick this off is what are your guys' favorite budget knives? And I guess by budget, we'll say 75 and under. That's perfect, Tom. Let's, let's move it up to about 150 bucks and under, just in case. For you? Yeah. <laughs> He's like seventy five. What am I gonna do with that? I got seventy five dollars. You can see the knives. I'm selling drunkens on the free. I, I know there's some people out there listening right now, they're like, damn, I can get seven Gerber paraframes for that. <laughs> I'm gonna kick it off with the rat the uh, Ontario rat. Mod one or two. I think that is by far one of the best budget knives. I have to 100% agree. That's a lot, man. Everyone, everyone has a rat. rat yeah. it's, a, it's a rat. It's, it's, I have two of them. Yeah, yeah it's a rat. It's, it's a poor man's Sebenza. <laughs> yeah. It flies open. It works. Let's just say, time. except it has better action. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you about my experience with the rat. So... When me and my lady uh, kind of, you know, first started, you know, we spent a couple of years together and she started noticing my knife addiction. I figured for Christmas as a gag gift, I'm going to buy her a knife, right? So I found this rat model two in pink, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, fellas, don't, don't think your wife's going to want a pink knife, but nope. just thought I'd <laughs> I figure it was a gag gift. I'm going to get her a pink one, you know, so it looks less threatening. And then so I, I, I bought her a rat model, too. I bought her a rat model, too, in pink. She opens this thing up in Christmas, and then, you know, she takes the knife out of the box. She's kind of laughing. And then so I'm, I'm like, hand it over to me so I can show you how to deploy it. I put my finger on the thumb stud. I pop the sucker open. It it freaking, I mean, it opens up with like authority. I'm like, mm -hmm. shit. I want me a rat in my. <laughs> 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 I mean, this thing was so rad. And then I hold it in the hand, and that that kind of thumb ramp that sits on the back of the blade mm -hmm. feels so comfortable with the jimping. I'm like, man, this thing is pretty cool. I think I got to buy me one. So I ended up ordering myself one just like a few days later. Uh, if you guys want a knife under like 30 bucks, a Rat Model 2 is by far the coolest little thing ever. And An OS 8, up, not yep, D2. An OS 8. I actually yeah. have the Rat Model 1 in, in uh, D2. I haven't really used it much, so I don't know. Plus eight was great. BJ is uh, asking me to ask you about the five dollar Bushcrafter Slippy, Jody. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that's the one. Uh, that's the one thing I have. That I do the the whole Bud K Mystery SHTF box. That one gets a. I get a lot of why do you do that? And there, it actually goes back to the fun aspect. That's it's fun. It's fun for me to do. It. No, none of it is really overly quality gear by any means, but it's just fun for me to see what the hell they're going to send me this month. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. 
And one of the knives that I got in one of those boxes was that little Bushmaster Bushcraft field folder. And it's a sodbuster pattern, wood handle. You know, it's actually 1095 steel on the blade. Mm. One got sent out, and we tested it. And they're usually 10 bucks, but they have a buy one, get one. So you can get them for 5 bucks. you know, two for 10 bucks or whatever. Yes. Better than a G2. If you can get a 1095 little slip joint for 5 bucks, what in the world is wrong with that? Seriously. I will sell all my GCs and buy a bunch of those is what I will do. <laughs> exactly. And that kind of became... It kind of became this sort of, you know, channel knife, basically. I've given away, I don't know, how many of those. And, yeah, some of them have, do have a little bit of blade play. Then again, it is a $5 knife. I mean, you're not paying you're not paying $400 for this knife at all. So you ain't going to have Chris Reed tolerances. It'll exactly, be fine. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's just a little knife. And like I said, for 5 bucks, a 10.95 blade, I mean, to me... It's be hard to go wrong because you know what? If you screw it up, you go spend another five dollars and get another pretty cool little knife. I mean, yeah, that's the way I look at it. That's cool. My GC15 is a seventy dollar knife and has blade play. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys were talking about budget knives. One of my it was the rat, you know, one and two, but I mean, the K bar Dozier, I like yeah. that knife. That's a cool knife. That's an awesome little knife. I haven't handled one, but everyone raves about them. It's there again. I mean, the handle it has a mildly cheap feeling to it, just because it's really light plastic. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why. Uh oh, what's going on? Oh no! Someone's super loud. <laughs> what is going on? I don't know. <laughs> Do you hear it, G? No, I, I don't I'm, hear it. I'm betting it's you then. What is it? it? It's something super loud in the background. Do you have a jet taking off in your living room? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's better now. It kind of went away. Someone mowing your carpet with a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it's it's better now. We'll let you know if it comes up again. <laughs> yeah. Turn your jet engine off. Go by the K Bar Dozer. Back on that big red. I I just I love that little I mean it's an awesome little knife. It's great in the pocket. It's a lightweight carry. It it just tucks away in your pocket. It's it's an awesome little knife. It's it's definitely not a short sword like that. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the 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 first time I held one of those K bar dozers, it it made me think of like a budget bug out. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It it it's very delicate ish to me. I, I, the K bar dozer, it's just a good. Those things are like how much do those things cost? Like twenty bucks or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's only like twenty bucks. Like three bones, and you get it, and you're like, "Yeah, why would I ever? Why would I ever buy a delicate?" <laughs> you get one in your hand, you're like, "Nope, never buy a delicate ever again." Yeah. This is exact. This is just as good a knife, and it's literally a third of the cost. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Hundred percent. Another, another one that kind of comes to mind, or unless you got something to say, real quick, Alex. I'm gonna say Boker. See, I haven't handled a whole lot of Bokers. Yeah, I haven't either, really. I've actually, I actually have three or four of them. Um, so I'm a big fan of JB Stout. I will mm -hmm. one day own one of those two thousand dollar customs, maybe. <laughs> but there's one. this knife that he made through Boker called the Lateralis, and it was, I think, sixty bucks in D two, and. It, it went like wildfire around the knife community. Even like high-end owners really were talking about it. And um, it's got a forward finger choiled, a really nice thick like leaf-shaped uh, blade profile on it. And you can get it in full stainless steel or you could get it in uh, G10 and stainless steel, which is the version I got. And it was 62 bucks, man. I mean... <laughs> 
uh, a full carbon fiber uh, titanium front flipper, the uh, Excalibur. Uh, I've seen that one. Yep, I have one of those too. That thing was 120 bucks, S35VN, titanium and carbon fiber. I mean, that's a lot of knife for the for the money, and the the blade is actually really thin too. Uh, the thing has got to weigh like 2.2 ounces. I don't know, not quite a lot. Yeah. So, uh, Boker Boker's been doing some really good stuff, and <laughs> I like them because they they have uh, anything from you know sixty two dollar knives. They do also sell you know five six hundred dollar knives in zirconium, Timascus. There was the Boker Thorn. Um, so they they kind of cater to everybody, but I don't know who out there is gonna buy a five hundred dollar Boker. <laughs> no. You know, but I will say um, their their entry level production stuff is pretty impressive for the money. Right on. I'll we'll talk about uh, budget. I have this knife. Kurt sent me, gave me this. This is a Civivi. Uh, well, I Those think are incredible. A... Okay. Funny thing happened. This is a this is a Civivi Aquila. I think this is one it is. At the exact same time, I had a Wee Knives Practic in my hand. <laughs> yes. This is exactly yep. the same knife other than that blade steel. It yep. is the same pocket clip. It is yep. the same liners. It is the same G10. It is the same build quality. It yep. is quite literally the same knife with a different blade steel. I ended up having those two knives in my hand. I literally walk, I do this like everybody does, right? I walk up to my girl, and I'm like, hey, check out these two knives. And she's like, yeah, they're knives. And I'm like, which, which one which one you like better? And she's like, why? I'm like, what if I told you there was a $100 difference between these two knives? She's like, I tell you, you were fucking stupid. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's what you say a lot. So which one is <laughs> the knife? And she picked up the Aquila. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she's a girl and it's bigger, and that's what she likes. That's life. But my point is, it's, it's, the point is, <laughs> and it's black. The point is, <laughs> the, the knives are it's life. Um, they are so similar in build quality. Um, these these Civivi knives. If you're into like, if you want a frame lock or a, a liner lock flipper, that whole thing. These things are ridiculous, and the grind that they do on them is very well done. This knife is, I don't know, 15,000 behind the edge. It's a very thin knife, and it cuts I mean, really, really well. That's all a Civivi is, man. It's a wee knife with a more budget, you know, with a more affordable blade steel. That's all it is. It's really all it was. Like, I ended up having these two knives, and I thought this was a really good knife for the money. I think these are like 60 bucks. And I remember I looked at the Practic, and I was like, you slut. I looked at the Practic, and I was like, who are you? What are you trying to, what, what are you trying to pull on me right now? <laughs> I ended up looking at the Practic like, what a waste of money! Why would I, why would I buy that when I could buy this? Like it, it really is just simply a matter of just the blades. And, and the more, the more designs, huh? the more designs that they keep pumping out, the better that brand's gonna be. There's some really cool designs coming out with uh, Elijah Isham. Yeah. That, that look yep. really, really good. Yeah. He's about mm, hour and a half, two hours away from me, so we gotta try and get him on the podcast at some point because that would be a very, very cool interview. Yeah, ask him. Ask him when he's gonna start designing knives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Hey, hey, hey! He's got some very interesting. He's bringing a lot of stuff to the table that that other people haven't brought yet. It might not be the most practical. No, it's cool. I mean, look, everyone needs a paperweight. I'm saying when he starts designing. <laughs> yeah, I really want to talk to him. <laughs> okay, so I'm, evidently I'm not alone in this. I'm definitely not alone in in my line of thinking. I mean, he makes some wow. They're it, very interesting, I guess, is a great way to say it. He yeah. designs. Wow. He does. Yes. He, he's, he's definitely a designer, without a doubt. I really like the looks of the Pleroma, and especially I think that one's a very, very usable design, too. I did not really care for the swayback in it. I just it, it just didn't fit me very well. Oh, I'm a huge I'm... swayback fan, so I guess yeah. that's yeah. that's why I'm leaning that way. Right, right. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I show Yeah. Have you seen the uh, Eterna? 
No. It's a uh, um, Warncliffe. It's funky looking. That's the other integral that was supposed to come out with the Pleroma. Alex might have seen it. Which one? The the Aeterna. The Wee Knives Aeterna. Mm, sorry, guys. I don't follow Wee that's, that much. That's the Isham, the other Isham design. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen the Pleroma. Yeah, it's like the Pleroma. It's a big Warncliffe. It's like a it's bigger than the Pleroma, and it looks very, very strange. That that's one I'm like, what the fuck? Elijah Isham. Yeah. Yeah. Like all of Isham's designs. What's new? Exactly. What's new? I, Alex, you weren't here. I told him he said he was going. He lives about an hour north. He's going to try to get Elijah Isham on the uh, podcast. And I just right. told him when he when he starts designing knives, I would love to have him on here. Oh yeah, man, that guy. So I, I had a gripe we talked about a couple episodes ago on my Omen, uh, which he actually mm-hmm. did all the CAD work for uh, Fanatic Edge. Um, I still am not selling the knife, though, because I, I, I think it's got an artistic look to it. And, yeah. you know, it might not be an knife. Artistic but... or autistic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's, I mean, his lines are beautiful on some of those those knives. The, the one that he did where Browse did his own version and then <laughs> he, the the Escaton. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's it's really a pretty interesting show-off of, like, design uh, ability. It wasn't my thing, to tell you the truth. I know some, uh, some people rave about it. I didn't really... I'm not feeling that knife, but I can appreciate the amount of design that Elijah puts into these kind of knives. And, um, but the thing is for me, I'm always going to be a uh, function over form. That's just me. Yeah. Um, you know, and some of his knives, they will function, but you, you, there, you kind of have to adapt to the knife versus the knife, you know, just being naturally adaptive to you. I can see that. Yeah. I'm so going to look at the opinion of like... something. Let me huh? get your opinion on something what about something like this the bird line okay the bird bird line. Line. yeah Talk bird. very good hey, very hey, good bird line. gerald it was the last time you saw this knife <laughs> that would be probably october of last year <laughs> somewhere around <laughs> gerald's knife that he sent to me um many moons ago um that i uh, tested and uh, was going to do some toughness testing. What I am going to do some toughness testing on. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a great knife. Love it, well, Gerald. Back, back when it was 35 bucks, it was a great deal. Now that it's up to like 53 uh, yeah, really? I mean, yeah, it's still a good deal, but it was a really good deal at, at 35 bucks. Well, see, that's what I like. You know, that's what I think is an excellent idea, like Spyderco. You know, there again, it all comes down to can you or can't you afford it? Now, not everybody can, you know, I mean, some of their knives aren't that expensive. But you go get a knife like this, you know, what's it sell for? This is the Metal Arc, Metal Arc 2. I mean, like they probably 20, sell for... 25 bucks? Yeah, 25, 30-ish bucks. You know, somebody can, there's people that can afford that a lot more than they can afford 90, 100 bucks for a knife or whatever the case may be. Right. You know, right. and I think it's just awesome that a, a company like Spyderco does a budget line and that leads me into i would and jt pointed this out jt's knife life pointed us out in his last video i would really like to see benchmade bring back the red box line the red line their I, agree. Budget line. I would really like to see that even if it is made overseas well huh? I mean, yeah you know there's yeah I mean, there. Can you imagine their QC in an American-made line at fifty dollars? But you know what, guys? That's the thing, though. Those days are gone. Like when it comes to competing on budget knives, high or low end, with American manufacturers versus overseas, there is just absolutely no competition, in my opinion. Yeah, with with C, with Civivi and Tangram and. Um, yeah. Even some of the lower end best tech knives, they've basically shot that market. I you mean, know, that, those are the the kings of that budget market now. I think they really are. I mean, um, and it's funny because Steve brings up Civivi, and that was actually like 
my top contender when it comes to budget knives. I um, I haven't bought one myself, but because um, I have no need. But uh, <laughs> a few people that I know have you know, a Civivi, and I got the the chance to handle one of them. It wasn't the one Steve's holding, but it was a different one. And I was pretty damn impressed. Uh, Best Tech, same thing. I was pretty damn impressed. I mean, it had better action than some of the other knives I own, which are like, you know, quadruple the price. Um, but, you know, with that being said, it does feel like stainless steel and some baseline micarta you know mm -hmm. it just all depends on what you're into but when if you if you don't have the budget i'm gonna say civivi is gonna be the best bang for the buck that you can get they're like i mean they have knives that are like 55 60 bucks and i think they should be more like 100 120 bucks i agree so um, yeah it, it's a, it's yeah. adapting to the knife game the knife game nowadays fit and finish is a big thing now um when when civivi drops a knife like this for 60 bucks and then spyderco raises the price on the bird to 55 dollars oh, this yeah. like a 50 dollar knife right it's not it's kind of it's 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 a great knife this bird knife if i'd have seen if i'd have known this existed i never would have bought a fucking uh tenacious <laughs> this kills it all day, every day of the yeah. week i don't even know where this was in my life why i was looking at tenaciouses but my point is is like you look at this but then you get this in your hand, and you tell them this is around the same price. This, when someone buys this Wii knife, it feels like a more expensive knife. It's it, pe you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It, 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 it's, it looks like a more expensive knife. Yeah, it does. Definitely. Definitely. They're all, yeah, they're all, it's G10, BD1, VG10, whatever. It's all a wash, right? Everything, the materials of these knives are nearly identical, other than the clip. I mean, but when, but then when you put these in your hand. Someone's gonna pick up this Wii knife and they're gonna go, oh yeah, this is this knife's like a hundred bucks. This knife's like you know what I'm saying? It's a yeah. premium feel. Even mm -hmm. the people that are that maybe can't afford a hundred dollar knife, they're gonna pick up this Navivi eight days a week and in the dark all the time because it feels like a better knife. If it's better, you get what I'm saying? As opposed nope. to this knife, which feels like where it's at. And I think you're right. I think I think American makers have completely lost it as far as the budget. I, you can't you can't compete with that. You're not gonna. Th this is American makers in China competing with it right here in yeah. front of your face. Yeah. This is an American company in China, and this is what they put out. Yeah. This is a Chinese company putting this out. Yeah. It's gonna win every time because okay. I don't I don't know I don't know where Spider Coast China plant is. I don't know if they're on the ghetto side, the other side of the train track. <laughs> <laughs> but these, are, these are two knives at the same price point in America and they're vastly different fit and finish yeah. and vastly different construction. Oh, yeah. I don't understand where Spider Co gets it. I don't know, maybe the crackheads, I don't understand. But wherever they get their wherever B and Civivi get their workers from, they Spider Co needs to hunt those guys down. And if Benchmade wants to open the red line again, they need to go hunt those guys down too. Because, and I'm yeah. not even talking Taiwan. This isn't. This is China. You yeah. go to Taiwan, you start getting. The, that's why those Rat Ones are so great. They're yeah. made in Taiwan. Taiwan's a whole different culture. Those people mm -hmm. take a whole lot of pride in what they do. They don't. They don't jank anything. That's the reason why all their great, all the work, all the every new Spider Co you see comes out of Taiwan right now because they're trying to compete with this. Is what they're yeah. trying to do. They're trying to compete with weeds. We between 150 bucks and 300 dollars is damn near untouchable in the U.S. Nobody, nobody can come close to that machining work they do over there in that mid to high end range. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's yeah. why you see Spartaco pushing everything to Taiwan to try to compete with them. Can you imagine if Spiderco tried to produce a design like the um, the we? Oh, I'm blanking on the name now. The Isham, that crazy one. The Eskatov. Yeah, can you imagine if Spyderco tried to produce the Escaton? What would the price be? Yeah, yeah. oh, boom. look at look. <laughs> MSRP fifteen hundred dollars. No, look, look at the drunken. Seriously, look at the machining on the drunken. Look at the machining on the Escaton. One's four hundred dollars. How much is an Escaton? They were three fifty new, I think. Three fifty. Yeah, that thing's see through. It's it's so fucking milled. Like, <laughs> there's more air in that knife than there and, is. And it was half integral. Yeah, it's just not. It's it's. I think he hit it on the head, man. It's just you can't. China China saw what they had, and they're just destroying it right now. 
Mm-hmm. I don't, you know what I mean? It's it's sad as a proud American, proud American that I am. It, it's <laughs> sad, but it's like, you man, I mean, they they start throwing out stuff like this at fifty bucks, and you're like, your you know, everyone's bar gets set differently, right? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like ten years ago, when you went and picked up a tenacious, you were like, "Yeah, this is this is a this is great. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm getting a deal for forty dollars." And then now, all of a sudden, you pick it up and you're like, "Man, look at this janky piece of shit. I'll go buy a bird. <laughs> bird birds are better built. They they cost less, you know." So and then the, people start, you know, as the bar gets raised, something like this, it, this is what's in your hand. And yeah. when I got this, I was like, "Wow, wow, that's what they're doing for fifty bucks, huh?" So, it's pretty, it's pretty tight. You know what I, mean? I know G wants to say something here. Dude, I got this for, as a, I got this to test from Jack Farm Boy. I that? I hadn't even heard anything about him really. Defcon. It Def- is a titanium <laughs> frame lock. D two. Same same price as the Civivi. Oh. And, <laughs> See. If you don't have a lot of money to spend and you're looking for a titanium frame lock that's decent, this this thing hits everything a Civivi hits except it's it's titanium. And what was that, G? Def- it's a uh, Defcon. Defcon, huh? Okay. And I've, so I've heard are. of them. No. So, yeah. I, I mean, think I saw them on Blade HQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you want titanium and you're you're concerned about how it's going to perform, so far it it cuts. You're going to get more work out of this than you are out of this for the same money. And what's the blade steel on it? It's D2. Okay. It's not bad at all. So I I got two budget American companies I want to bring up. Um, let's talk about CRKT. <laughs> hey, <CRT. Yeah. laughs> okay. This guy, this guy stabs concrete. I did see that. Let, 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 let's let's talk about CRKT. You uh, shouldn't have disrespected the concrete like that, Steve. I <laughs> fucked concrete up. Okay? I, I, <laughs> what American manufacturing was all about, okay? That concrete was at least worth a cheap spider co. I don't have any. I don't have any. I don't have. I don't have that many spider cuts. <laughs> I just so, so CRKT is an American company uh, making budget line folders. Um, I mean, what's your overall opinion if somebody, if your friend is shopping for a knife and says, "Hey, what about these CRKTs?" What do you all think? Mm. No. Hmm. If you want a really cool design. That is manufactured terribly. Go for it. Or yeah. if you want steel that's mislabeled, yeah. go for it. Yeah, I mean, I've recently had the what was it, the seismic? Have you guys taken yep. a look? At that, one? that thing's a <laughs> tank. Yeah, but for what you get at a hundred and twenty dollar price tag, it, it just doesn't do it for me. Not yeah. at all. Not well, at all. And- and they're using that 1.4116 steel at like $150 knives. It's like, come yeah. on. At exactly. least use D2. Yeah, okay. <laughs> D2, right? But, yeah. Seriously. The Pilar yeah. was a good hit. Yes, the, I agree. The Pilar yeah, was one of popular. the... That was for very popular. Yeah. I, no. CRKT doesn't make sense to me because... People have been saying for a long time what, what Tom just said, right? If you want a great design, right, but subpar materials. The Pilar was a great design, right? So they saw the Pilar was a great design. Everyone's screaming for an upgrade, screaming for an upgrade. So they dipped their toes in the water, and they did, like, the carbon fiber and the 12C27. Remember that? Yep. Bam! Smoked out. <laughs> I have the okay. S35VN one. Yeah, then they're like, okay, okay, okay. 70 bucks. S35. Bam! Sells out like hotcakes. And then they go, hot diggity dog, seven hundred dollars shock. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Who makes any goddamn sense. Like I don't understand who the people are at CRK. Like they have great designs, right? And, and I get in arguments with CRK guys. You know, CRKT guys are like, oh, well, it's not for like high end guys like you. Nah. No one ever said get rid of the original Pilar. No one ever said get rid of this original Amicus. All I'm saying is make this thing in titanium with a blade worth a damn. 
and you're going to and charge a hundred, you know, put S35 on it, put titanium, charge $125 for it. And you're going to sell it to two different markets now. You uh, get what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, uh, I've never had one of their knives that were not well built for the money. Um, this, this amicus is very well built for, for the money. It's, it, it, it's great. It's centered. <laughs> it's better than most spider codes I get. <laughs> the, yeah. grind, the grinds even the, the knife's dead centered. I just stabbed this into concrete about 40 times and the lock hasn't moved. Uh, it's still centered. Uh, but it's just like you guys are saying, they, they're in this weird stage where they want to, they're like jumping into weird spots in the price range. Like you said, $120 for the size bit. Like, oh, it's cool. It's got the deadbolt lock. Oh, it's so awesome. But it's got like this baby shit soft steel that mm -hmm. like nobody knows about that, yeah. <laughs> that you're going to have to sharpen every five seconds. So it's like, I could spend $120 on that, or I could spend $10 more and go buy a PM2. That's what people are going to do. They're going to go buy the PM2 all day long because it's the name recognition and all that noise. You know, I, I, it's like they don't realize what market they're fighting in. You know, it, it was funny because like the first time I ever saw that steel and and read 1.4116, I'm like, I've never heard of that. There's no letters in the name though, so it probably is shit. <laughs> I'm like no steel that I've, I I can think of off the top of my head that just has numbers is good. It's a, it's a German cutlery steel. It's a simple you know. Yep. It's not and it's not bad, but they flagrantly advertise that it's like sh soft as shit. Like they yeah. say that on the website. Like so, it's just it doesn't make sense. You know, like once you start crossing thresholds, you got to look at what you're competing with, right? Like yeah. look at who's in your price, your weight class, right? You know, it's like. It's you know it's like you know Sugar Ray trying to fight Muhammad Ali like you got to look at who's in your in your weight class that guy's just as fast but he's bigger you know you especially, can't especially you know since they're they're starting to make more knives with D two and I know that we've all done the testing with D two and it hasn't been fantastic yeah. but it's better than one point four one one six for one hundred fifty dollars at least throw that on there I mean at least some people know that steel and are like okay I can justify it but not or a, a yeah, or just don't, don't touch that price bracket. That's really where I'm going yeah. at. Just put make this seismic seventy five dollars and watch it fly. Watch that thing fly off the shelves of seventy five bucks. All day long, it's gonna. Go, I promise you, no one's touching it because look at this thing. Look at this Luzon from Cold Steel. How much are these things? Like forty five dollars. No wow. So I got forty. I don't even know what these things cost. Forty five dollars. This is. A, this is ACR 13 MOV. This is like a six inch blade of ACR 13 MOV that's perfectly ground. It's got four stop pins in it, and it's forty dollars. CRKT, don't tell me you can't make something like this. You know what I mean? It, it, it's yeah, it's just that price range. It, it's it's, and then you guys go release the shock, and you guys are showing me they're doing a recall because the stop pins are breaking. Yep. Oh yeah. A seven hundred fifty dollar knife that they only sold like two hundred oh. of them. And with this ginormous overbuilt dead lock or deadbolt lock or whatever that that lock is, deadbolt, yeah. And it's supposed to be so incredibly strong, and your stop pins are breaking from people opening the knife. Cause, yeah, know, just cause... opening because no one's using that shit. <laughs> no, no one's using seven hundred dollars CRKT. No, it's like, it's like it's like having a Mercedes, man. That thing goes off the lot the second the, the second that thing's just uh, Blade HQ. It's worth a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like that's yep. a that's I, a I, funny is people are are keeping these as like safe queens you know yep. you know what the funniest part about that knife is though i know we're getting a little off topic here but it has the same satin grind that their 20 dollar china knives do <laughs> it's the exact same they didn't go like any sort of special hand rub finish no it looks the exact same but it's the 20 dollar ones but it's xhp right that's okay right Ooh, yeah Ooh, XHP. Made by Lion Steel. Yeah, I'm 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 down with CRKT if they just get their ideals right. Like if you're gonna stay in a budget range, make good knives in a budget range. If you want to venture into a higher price bracket, then look at who's around you and act accordingly. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta act accordingly. You can't just because it's a deadbolt knife, just because the knife's fucking nine inches long and made out of metal in G ten doesn't mean you could charge hundred twenty dollars for it. Even if they don't want to do it, they've already proved that they can, you know, manufacture knives with lion steel. Have them make you a couple models at $150, $200 price point in, you know, 
LMAX, M390, that kind of stuff, because they they seem to be killing it with those materials at that price point. Yep. Exactly. Don't. No. 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 <laughs> uh oh. I'm, uh oh. I'm gonna bring up the manly wasp again. Yeah, the the mass marauder looks like he's he wants to say something. Hold on. No one. Lion Steel and M390 done well should never be put in the same sentence ever. Well, <laughs> technically, they're them Fox and like two other companies are all the same company now. They all use the same facilities. Yep, Fox M390 horrible. Really. Did it, wasn't your M390 really good, Steve, with that Italian knife? I can't remember the brand. Masterin. Masterin. Yeah, that's all made in the same factory, too. I think that was, yeah, it was M390. Yeah, it was Masterin, yeah. Uh, Real that, one, that one was great, though. That stuff was awesome. <laughs> I I love they're it. all over the board. I don't know. Italian M390. Super soft. I haven't tested it yet. Super soft. It's like It's like a trend. Yeah. See, but my my folks are uh, of Italian descent, so maybe I get all the good knives, G, and you like I get, <laughs> but I get all the good Italian knives. I go order some foxes. Oh, maybe, shoot. maybe it's it's the beard, the red beard. I'm still gonna bring it up again. I know we've talked about this knife before, but I think still one of the best budget options because they do make a locking version. Manly knives. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, their wasp is great. I've got one of their peaks here in 12C27. That thing, the, the, their their peak in 12C27, in my opinion, is an endura killer all day long. Yes. All day long. Is it the Super same size as the endura? Yeah. 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 Okay. Pretty close. I love the peak. The peak was awesome. I've never seen one. I mean, I've seen the knife. I've never seen it, like, compared to anything. It's just, I mean, it's, to me, it's just a, yeah, it's just a simple, awesome knife. It is I mean, an awesome knife. There's nothing special about it. It's plain. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, for what little bit I was able to use it, that thing looks like it would just work for you until it just absolutely couldn't work anymore. Yep. One hundred percent. How was the fit and finish on it, Steve? Same as an Endura. Yeah. Everything's yeah. Fine. It's it's yeah. It's. I mean, it's not like fit and finish queen or anything, but the blade centered. I mean, it, it's G10 as opposed to FRN. I mean, but it's everything's smooth. There's no hard corners. There's no burrs. There's no the clip stays in place. It's deep carry. It's about what did I measure? Twelve thousands behind the edge, ten thousand behind the edge. So it's it's just a, it's it's, it's, it's it half as thick as the Endura. Yeah, thick yeah. as the Endura. Um, it doesn't have these stupid fucking humps that the Endura has. I hate these things. I Same. don't understand what the. Oh my god, this thing's just like a banana. You just you can grab <laughs> it in your hand, it doesn't bother you at all. And like he said, this is just. I take them apart, man. They're really simple. It's a back lock with two washers, and that's it. And it's just. This thing's gonna open and close, and it's gonna cut shit all day long, every day. It's it's it's, and they do a really good job on the Tulsi 27. So it's like you can't, and it's ground to cut. Winner winner chicken dinner, bitch. Uh, I had David bring up the brand San Renmu, Real Steel, and Kubi. San Renmu, I don't know Kubi. I do know Real Steel. I have a Kubi. Let me grab it. Have this, I think it's called the Poltergeist, right here. Poltergeist. That's actually a nice looking knife. This knife? Okay, let me tell you something right now. Brian, over at um, Slicey Dicey. Brian, look, man, I love you, bro, but I had this, and I had that steel wheel um, piercer. You must have been smoking crack the day you put that knife above this knife. This knife, this this real steel is heads and shoulders above that steel wheel. This knife, this knife has a crown spine for fifty Whoa. bucks. It has a crown spine 
you're talking stainless steel liners. It's got it's on washers. It's I want to say it was fourteen thousandths behind the edge. Fourteen thousandths behind the edge um, with fourteen C twenty eight end steel. If you want to talk about like I have compared this, I have recommended this knife to people uh, like uh, Big Red EDC says who can't. Guys who wanted a work knife like a PM2 but couldn't afford it, I've recommended this knife like six or seven times because this is a big, gnarly, badass, well-built knife that cuts like a fucking demon. Like all day. And it's, and it's got a wire clip. It's got a wire clip. There you go. I'm sorry. My knife that I have is not a Kubi. It's an Ethan Grow, which I know a lot of people have strong opinions about. But tell us, Tom. Drop shutty action for twenty dollars. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. I know What's... a lot of people. A lot of people don't like them because they steal designs, kind of like Gonzo does. Um, uh, the stealing designs thing. No, but I I do have an issue with the blade. It is warped to one side. But even with that, the tip is almost centered. <laughs> Almost, it, it's off by like a, a thousandth it, or two thousandths, maybe. It's so close. More centered than a bench made, right? <laughs> it really is, and it's actually ground better too. The whole yo, like, can we get over the whole stealing designs thing? Can everyone just get over that real quick? Can we yeah. just pass it up? Like, if the knife says Ganzo all over it, and it's it looks like another design, you're not stealing shit. It says Ganzo. If a knife comes out of Russia and says Spyderco with an I instead of a Y, that's stealing. Yes. There's a difference between copying a design that's already existed and stealing money from a company. You get what I'm saying? And he, here's my thing. I can see both sides of it. I did um, actually on that one. Yeah, I, I, I see I, both sides. But at the same time, like the person that's buying a 940 isn't going to buy a $20 Gonzo clone of it, unless they're trying to figure out if they'll actually like the 940 before buying it. And see, that's where uh, that's where my thing comes in. You know, there again, it comes back to can afford. You see this yeah. whole, you know, you see, yes, there's plenty. Trust me, there's plenty of copies or whatever you want to call them out there. Um, that's kind of, I would, I would, okay, buy one. Let's say the Effingro. Mm-hmm. Okay, does this fit my hand? It looks like it's made like a whatever. Does it fit me? Okay, I like it. It's a good. It's a good feel. So maybe that. Maybe I would. Okay, save up my money and go buy a 940 or whatever. You know the the. There is that option, and I know it's. Yeah. There's very polarizing views on that. Opinions on this whole subject. I I get that, but. Well, here's my example of it. So, like, for example, let's say a Shira Goroff. So, yeah. a, a Shira Goroff is copied over and over and over again. Now, the reason why Sh Mr. Shira Goroff makes so much cash is because he spent the time to design a knife and a blade shape that works really well, looks beautiful. I mean, it's just very aesthetically pleasing. And for somebody to piggyback off of that, make a blade half subpar, exactly like that one. Yep. And it's, and, it's exactly what it is. That's what it that's is. It's exactly, and it's not even like similar to a Shiro. It, it's got the same screw pivot design. That's what like, gets it for me. Yeah. Like the the design of a Shiro is very basic in in nature, and that's what works well for it. But it's all probably like a design that could very easily like coincidentally be copied but it's very obvious when you use the exact same screws but yeah exactly so for me it's not it's not that i i have a problem with guys trying to use a similar design i mean there's tons of knives out there that are going to look alike but when you go to the extent of making like what i would call more of a clone i think that it's unfair to the guy who came up with the design first just like a patent, for example, you know? Yeah. And, you know. So, here's my thing. This comes from me, right? Um, my perspective as a chef, right? I'm a guy 
who takes things and I create something and I sell it for money, right? I'm a craftsman. I make things and I sell it for money. This is why I bring up the whole, if it says Ganzo, if it says spider right? Or if it says Shirago. If, if it's a Kubi knife or F and Grow, whatever the name is, and it said Kirogoff on it, that's a flint. You're trying to rip somebody off. It's not about the maker to me. If I, okay, every dish I've ever cooked, let's say I do steak frites, right? I do, you know, like in a French restaurant, I do French cuisine. So I do steak frites, right? And it's a ribeye with French fries. It's basically what the dish is, right? That dish has been done a million times. Everyone does it, right? I'm not, I can't, um, if someone down opens up a restaurant down the street and decides to do a French restaurant like mine, and they do it better than me, then, then they win. If they start selling it, if, they, if they're selling it as Steve's, Steve's Steak Freaks, then they're ripping <laughs> off my recipe. You get what I'm saying? Um, but it's yep. different with knives because they're not buying the name. They're buying the look. They're buying the design. But the look, but the look that's what I'm trying to tell you. The look is just, like the, is, is just like the look of my plates. If they copy my plating style or they copy the restaurant or whatever they want to copy, you can do that. The point is you got to put out a better product. So if people are going out and buying Shira Garves for $60 and being happy with it, then Mrs. Shira Garve needs to look at whether his knife is worth $700. And if it is worth $700, bucks, then the people that are paying $700 for it would never buy a ripoff. And the people that are buying the ripoff are never going to buy a $700 Shira, like Tom was saying. It, it, it's, it's two different mar – you're not stealing anything. It, the intellectual property thing is, is a moot argument. I've had, I've had dishes stolen from me a thousand times, but it's life. That's just the way it works. I agree with you to that aspect, but at the same time, I'm still I, I look at it more in the artistic perspective. Like if you make a painting in the same style as another painter in that kind of artistic community, you know, that's gonna be frowned upon. Yeah. And and no one will buy it. That's my point. If it's no, frowned people upon will that, buy it because of the price exactly. point. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The people like Tom just said, the people that will buy it. They're never going to buy your painting in the first place. And the people that are, aren't going to buy it are the ones that are the true blue diehards and are going to buy your, your artistic painting. So it, the, whole, the whole concept of intellectual property, again, coming from a guy who's had my recipe stolen. I've had him stolen so many times in restaurants, like across the street. Like it happens. It's life. So th this is coming from experience. This is my own personal opinion of it because I've had to deal with this my entire chefing career guys will take guys will work for you they'll take an idea they'll run somewhere with it and they'll go try to do it better than you my solution to that is just be better than them you know what i mean yeah have, have you guys seen the uh shiro knockoffs green thorn the brand is green thorn no, I think I they are dead on copies of shiro's they don't like market themselves as it but they're like 80 ish to a hundred dollars and the people who buy them i mean they're coming in good steals too like s30v s35vn that kind of stuff the people who buy them say that they're every bit as good as a shiro but at a seventh of the cost i'm not sure i totally believe that but i mean we're dealing with knives man. knives are extremely subjective guys they're very yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if I charge $25 for a burger at my restaurant and I hand make brioche and I'm using high, you know, lettuce that I bought from a farmer 20 minutes from here and I'm using beef from a farmer from 30 minutes from here, and somebody walks in my restaurant and then they walk into a Five Guys and go, man, that, his burger is just as good as Steve's down the street. It's subjective. You know what I mean? So that's a, especially nowadays, man. You know what I mean? I, I, I've handled a Shiro, I've handled a knockoff Shiro. There was, you yeah. know, there's a, there's a, you know, it, it wasn't a Shiro, clearly, but I mean, yeah. you're getting, I mean, you know, even this ceviche, I mean, this is a ball bearing frame, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, people can put out some pretty compelling stuff. It's just a matter of, I, I look at it from a maker's perspective, like being the chef, being the guy that has to contend with it. I have to stay on top of my game to keep my customers. Yeah. And to that, I, Adam Edge Sharpening just said, if someone is dumb enough to not be able to, de to design a Shiro but smart enough to perfectly replicate a Shiro, then Shiro Gorov needs to examine the quality of their work. Yeah, you see, yeah. <laughs> it's a Tom Edge Sharpening. Yeah. I, I got yeah. no argument about the quality of a Shiro Gorov. I, I have a couple. They're fucking amazing. 
Oh, I yeah, I one hundred percent believe it. I gotta handle one one of these days. And I, I want I think that a lot of the knife, even the higher escalon of of uh, knife makers, oh you know, owe a lot to Shiro. Yeah. Uh, they they have come up with some great things, and a lot of people have followed on, like the multi row bearing system and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, but you know, I'm sure if I handle one of those. Uh, replicas and I handle one of the real Shiro's, I'm going to be able to tell the difference for 100%. sure. 100%. I'm sure you'll be able to yeah. tell the build difference. You know, but it, it it's it's kind of comes back to what Steve says is for me, that matters. It's like I'm the kind of guy that I, I want an original 65 Ferrari GTO and, you know, some guys may be happy with a Datsun 240Z. You know, <laughs> Um, which will still be a fun car to drive and still perform well, but it's not going to be your Ferrari. It's not going to feel the same. Right. And I think that's where it comes down to Steve is it's entirely subjective. Yeah. Yeah. It it really is. It all depends on the person. And you know what? If you think that somebody that buys a clone is just an absolutely most or a copy or whatever you want to call it is the most horrible person in the world, that's fine. That's your opinion. And, And you have a right to that opinion. But the other guy that says, why would I pay $700 when I can get this knife for like 40 bucks? That's it's not obviously that quality, but it's pretty close. And I can't afford $700. Right. This is as close as I can get. So you know what? I, I'm going to go for it. You yeah. know, th- there's that whole, you know. Well, my gripe was never with the people who buy them; is more the people who who make them. Right. Oh, dude, I've heard some. I've heard some pretty crappy stuff. I, I I I only here's my only thing. I only wish that they would spend a little bit of extra uh, effort to make it their own in in a sense. Take a Shirogor off if you want. Take that nice swooping, like straight flat grind design. But change the frame up. Make it make it your own just a little bit. Give it a little bit more of your signature to it if right. you're going to go out and do that. Uh, yeah. When the pivot screw, everything matches, the, the, the frame lock, everything is like a dead-on replica. I mean, you know, I, at that point, I, I, it's subjective, of course, but I kind of would prefer that everybody kind of does their own thing. Um, I think in the knife community, a lot of times, when you when you look at these custom knife makers, um, make certain designs which aren't even close, as close to each other as like let's say a clone. But like for example, like a Brian Nadeau um, uh, arch nemesis. Mm-hmm. And there's this other knife maker called. Uh, uh, what's his name? Merrick Mer- Merrick Knives or Mer- something like that. Anyways, he came out with a, um, a knife that looks very much like the Arch Nemesis on Facebook or Instagram, and a lot of people were making comments. And you know, even I mentioned, I'm like, hey man, that looks a lot like an Arch Nemesis. I mean, the blade shape, mm-hmm. they have full guards just like it. At the same point. Yeah. Um, you know, he's like. I came out with this first. So when it comes to the even the high end market, this is still an issue. And a lot of the guys are like, "Well, you know, like come up with your own thing. Why are you stealing money from me?" Yeah, and yeah. it's funny because BJ commented earlier. It says people copy a fucking twenty five dollar rat. No knives are safe. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, look what Gando did with that one. I mean, they yeah. got what the rat think, you know? Yep. Why did they copy it? Because it's an awesome freaking knife. That's why yep. they copied it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. simple. I bring this up all the time, and guys give me shit for it. The sod buster pattern. Mm-hmm. The gun stock pattern. Take traditional knives, for example. It's called a pattern. Everyone does one, right? Yeah. And that's okay. But the second we start talking about modern knives, it, it becomes copying and plagiarism. And again, this is me. Again, I have a very unique perspective. Being a chef, where ideas are stolen all the time, like all the time, it just happens. Like people, people are gonna rip your shit off left and right, literally right next door to you. Mm-hmm. So I've dealt with it, and I have a much more uh, subdued approach to it. 
and I respect what Alex is saying, and I, I totally understand being um, compassionate for the maker and, and like you know go go find your own shit. Um, but I, I, I'm just I try to take it more of like a, it's just life. Like people are gonna people are gonna do it, right? People are gonna do it. People are gonna steal ideas. People are gonna take shit. It's like what's that guy's name? G- uh, Gareth Bull. Yep. yep. Yeah, him. I, I, I was never really cued on to his stuff till I saw a knife. It was a picture of it taken apart, and I thought it was a Sebenza. <laughs> it's literally the same goddamn knife, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? What, what the hell is it called? Uh, Gareth Bull. The Shamwari? Sham, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. going to say San Remu. Shamwari, yeah. It, it literally looks like a it, – it's very inspired by a, by a, a Sebenza. Mm-hmm. Just but, like that one, that Reich. Well, that's – what hold is on, this? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that is, is that one of the Rikes? No. Which one's that? That's a San Renmu land. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. I, I have mean, one here. But, but what is it? Tell me what it is. It's a Benza. It is exactly what it is. Yes. I had a guy send it exactly what it is. Yep. Yeah. It's funny, and, and, and to, to talk about like what Alex said, uh, the time that I handled a Shiro and then a clone. With a guy, you see him all over YouTube. His name, he's on Instagram too. His name's Mark Tudor. Um, he's a very avid knife collector. He lives in the Atlanta area. I met up with him before. Um, he literally brought like backpacks of his collection. Like he also makes some knives. He's a cool guy. Really super nice guy. And me and him had the exact same thought. When he's showing me the, the Shiro, right, the clone. And I was just like, man, I was like, if you could make a knife this good, I wonder why you wouldn't just make your own design. So to piggyback up what Alex said, I felt the same way. Because I was like, man, this is a really well – with this right here, with this land knife, Yeah. this is a great knife. Mm-hmm. This, is is. A, this is a stainless steel frame lock, right? Yeah. So you look at it and you go, man, if you just – if you just, like what Alex is saying, because I'm just playing devil's advocate. If you, why, why can't you just change this a little bit and, and not stir up all the bullshit, right? Like, oh, of you course. Know? Oh, I, I, yeah, I get, I totally get what you're saying, and I mean that's that is a, that is a perfect point. If you can make a knife that looks like another knife that well, great. Take change just a little bit, and you've got your own awesome yes. freaking knife. Yes. 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 That size. Yes. This is smaller than my 25, so I don't know if they're about the same size, but, I mean, they, it's a well-built knife, I'll tell you that. <laughs> like, there's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know who does the San Ren, is it San Ren, you said, land? Yeah, it's a, it's a San Ren move offshoot. I mean, well, and that's just it. you got San Ren move, you've got, uh, yeah, and Grow, um, it's a lake. Yeah. I forget. But let me throw out a couple that we've talked about a little bit is Kuvi and mm-hmm. well they're Firebird now. They're not Gans. They're, they're Firebird by Ganzo. They changed their name, I think, just to get away from that, you know, that stigma because I mean, yeah, they were they were doing the whole copy thing. I mean, left and right, any cool pattern that came out, they made it. But if you look at Kuvi's and the Firebirds now, what they're doing with their own designs kind of get away from that and I hope they continue to because I tell you what Kubi especially makes some awesome knives for a good, I mean we're talking titanium S35 VN knives for 70 bucks really yeah or carbon fiber, a carbon fiber knife for 50 really and they're not I mean they're their own design do they take cues I will throw this in there. do they take from some other times? Yeah, probably. But then again, it gets to a point where pretty much there's a few taken from other places like and them making their own time. Oh. I mean, are you, if you take a basic design, not an exact design, but a basic design, you know, if I change this and change this, you know, we can make really cool looking knife, and it's our own design. And I think Koopy and Get Firebird are really trying to do that. And I really do, and I hope they continue to do that. I don't know if you, I don't know, I know, Gerald, you've had some, you know, the whole Ganzo, you know, and Koopy saying, I don't know what your perspective is on that, but. 
And at the same time, they even even the the Ganza stuff that looked like other stuff. I think people also miss that the one that looks like a PM2, for example, the blade length is is different, and so is the handle. Like that, what's supposed to be a 940 copy. You know that that thing is so much bigger than a 940. It, it doesn't even feel like a 940 when you put it in your hand. Oh, I mean, it, it, oh, no, I, yeah, I totally get that whatsoever. Though. Right, but it's just that stigma. You know what I mean? It's that stigma because they were doing it. I mean, they were. It, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it is what it is. It, but I, like I said, I really think they they're trying to get away from that. I mean, especially well, like Firebird. I mean, they're. The FH11, the 12, the 21, 31, 41, 51. I mean, I just, I just got a 51 in. That is an awesome little knife. That FH51 for 25 bucks. That's a sweet little knife. I love that thing. And that's who they're appealing to. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, like, what, what's the real difference? Be everyone looks at this, right? It's Chinese made. Oh, it's a copy off of a. Uh, 21 right mm -hmm. but the gareth but the gareth bull is okay right because it's a custom uh, i, I custom, think right? i think i i think the gareth bull is different though because it's a front flipper it's it's been out a long time too it's it, it's <laughs> come on you can't look at that knife and say it doesn't take this this knife is smaller than a nine than a 21 this knife is stainless steel this knife does not have s35 en so i can point out as many uh, differences between this and a 21 as I can the Gareth Bull and a 21. But because this is made in China, everyone, you see what I'm saying? I, again, I'm playing. Those flat slab carbon fiber, I'm sorry, the flat slab titanium scale or handles that kind of make it resemble. But uh, and the blade shape. for some of us guys, man, like a Shamwari is something that's even more appealing than even a Sabenza, you know? I'm still trying to get one myself. But, but we, we, he took design cues, right? Like, it's, it's he inspired. Did. He did. It's inspired. He did. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I just I, – everybody knows me, right? Like, I, I'll dog Spider-Co as quick as I will Benchmade. I'm very, like, play devil's advocate. I like to dish out the shit evenly, right? Like, keep, keep everybody on their toes. That, that's my thing. You know what I mean? It's like when it becomes a – it seems like when it becomes a mass-produced thing out of China, it becomes cloning. This Nowhere on this does this say Chris Reeves knives. Nowhere. And and yeah. nowhere would, would you get what I'm saying? Nowhere does this say Chris Reeves. If this said Chris whoop, if this said Chris Reeves <laughs> knives on it, I might have cut myself. Um if this said this said Chris I'm trying to help you say it, Rambo. If this, if this said Chris Reeves knives on it, different ballgame. You're trying to rip the consumer off. Right, That's my right. biggest issue. When a, if a knife, if a Ganzo knife portrayed a PM2 and said Spiderco on it, different ballgame. You're trying to confuse the consumer. But when you, when you you label a knife, say, you know, land or whatever, and it says 12C27, then it's clearly inspired, right? Like, it's, it, you understand. I, heavily inspired. Heavily inspired. <laughs> is that knife, people calling that knife a clone? This is it's not a clone. clone. It's a copy. It's a copy, yeah. It's, it's not a, a clone. copy. It's not a clone because it clearly says land right on it, right? This is not you know, it's, it's a, it, it is a copy. I mean, I mean, come on, it is. <laughs> but it's definitely not a clone because they're not trying to use Chris Reed's name to make money. That's my definition. And that's where the whole subjectiveness comes in again. Yeah, that's, that's my biggest thing. It's for the consumer. If you turn around and you took this knife and you put Chris Reed, CRK made in Idaho, S35, and you try to sell this as that, now oh, we yeah, got... You'd definitely be ripping somebody off. <laughs> Without a doubt. Paul yeah. in the chat says it's an homage knife. It's an homage. There we go. <laughs> yeah, and that's a that's a word that gets thrown around quite a bit. Sure, right? Yeah. 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 You know, that that's my thing. Like I said, you know, it, it's like you're gonna go around to every restaurant in your neighborhood that sells spaghetti and meatballs and yell at them because like the original guy that made spaghetti and meatballs. You get what I'm saying? It's still the same dish. It still has the same soul, the same purpose, but it, it's being copied. It's it, yeah. nobody says this is so, nobody says we're the original place that the spaghetti and meatball came from. No, I, we're I think, spaghetti and meatballs. I think you're onto something there. It seems like like you said about the traditional knife patterns. I mean, I think it feels like 
the longer the designs are out, the more okay it is to copy them. But when they're relatively new and people know where they came from, that's when people start to get a little offended over it. It's 30 years old, this pattern. They can suck a dick. Like, they got... <laughs> <laughs> guys always do. They go, oh, well, uh, 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 Sod Buster is 100 years old. So what, time makes it relevant? No, motherfucker, it doesn't. If you want, like, call a spade a spade. You want to say someone's stealing something? Tell GEC they stole every pattern they ever made. Tell Case they're stealing patterns. Don't pick and choose is my point. Don't sit there and call this a, cl a, a, a clone, but but a Gareth uh, Bull Samwari not. Because I can pull as many differences from the two. They're both inspired. Neither of them are claiming to be a, a 21 from CRK. They're just taking cues from it. You know what I mean? It, it, you gotta call. You gotta keep it even. You can't just pick because they're from China and be like, oh, they're trying to sell people CRKs. No, they're not. No, everyone knows this ain't no damn CRK. This thing weighs as much as two CRKs. Get out of here. <laughs> it, it, you know, there, there, there's no way. It's just, so just be even. Be be consistent. You know, if you're gonna be bad. Be consistently bad. Right. Mm -hmm. At least we can all know what to expect. Right. I want to. I want to make sure we touch on one more uh, budget-friendly company. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, um, I I think uh, it definitely needs to be brought up is uh, Kershaw. Oh yeah, and, how did that slip our minds? I made it slip my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Kershaw. Oh, Kershaw. <laughs> I I, yeah, I, I very much like them. The Matrix hasn't there. Yeah. What was the, that? The Matrix. There's been a lot of issues with that knife. Yeah. There has. I got Jack Farm Boy. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, this is my this is my purple people poker. <laughs> <laughs> now, they have put out a lot of very good designs recently, and I love that they're starting to go to the unassisted flipper. They're yeah, taking that's... some of the ZT you know technology, and moving it into their cheaper knives. I had one of the, the Kershaw Atmoses. Those were nice. Those were very nice for $30. I actually uh, won one of those on a raffle. Dude, it's drop shutty. It is. It, it flips well. The, de nice. the detent's good. It drops shut. The only gripe I have about it, you take it apart, and there's like 10 million pieces in there. There's like They have like three different washers on each side. Hey, but those bearings are hilarious, though, right? They're yeah, like, they, they, have, they have a steel washer, bearings, steel washer, and then the other side, it's steel washer, bearings, steel washer. Yes. It's ridiculous. There you go, Curse from Skyline. Skyline. That's also a great one. I have a personal vendetta with Kershaw because they put up... What's that knife? It's inspired by a ZT, and they released it this year. It's assisted. It's like uh, a step. Uh, the cryo. No. One the cryo. It cryo? was some. Um, it was like a Rexford design. Anyway, I. Oh, said it was the. Was it a George design? It was. Was it that? Um, yes. The one based off the ZT 920, yeah. I think. Yes. Yes. And I made a comment, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, why do you guys keep doing this? I was like, you've had amazing success with, uh, with non-assisted knives. Why don't you just keep in that direction? And they were, <laughs> they were like, <laughs> well, if, if you want a non-assisted version, you can pick up the ZT such and such. I said, well, what if someone doesn't want to spend $240 on this knife, but they like the design and want it unassisted? And they said, clearly you don't understand the knife business and you're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys know they I remember that. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Nope. Hey, you know what? They actually sell 70% more assisted knives than they do non-assisted knives. That's because they make 70% more. Thank you, Tom. Uh, <laughs> that was just, Tom, just this past year and a half they've started to put out unassisted flippers. Because it's a legal switchblade in a sense. Like if it's so is the one on flippers, but I can close it way faster. But non knife people like that whole non assisted thing, and I or assisted thing, sorry. And I know this because I've had a couple assisted knives, like a blur, mm -hmm. and people just get a kick out of it. Whoa, this thing rockets out. I yep. hate assisted knives myself, but I, I'm with you. I get people that come in the shop all the time. Do you guys have any of those assisted Kershaws? I'm like, yes, yeah, all we carry. 
Yeah, because it's 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 the 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 market, you know, and that's not catering to knife people at that point. There's a lot of people who aren't knife people that will buy a Kershaw because it's a household name. Yep. And a lot of times they want that assisted. I have well, it's probably cuz they don't know how to operate a knife, but Exactly. You know. Like, have you ever handed a knife over to one of your buddies that have not knife people, and then they, they have a hard time, they're scared to open it, you know, like a flip? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Dude, yeah. I, I hand people knives, like a ZT at the shop all the time, and they, like, go to flip it, and it, like, comes halfway out because they're scared, and they're pressing so hard on the lock bar, and they're like, this thing sucks. I'm like, well, watch this. And, and, and I flip they, it, and they're like, well, how'd you get it to do that? And then they don't even know how to close it. They're like... Yeah. Wait, how do you close this thing? I can't you know? tell you how many times I have a, a knife that I hand to them open, and they're, like, flipping it around like this. They're like, where do you close this thing at? I'm like, it's a liner lock. They're, like, looking on the back. They're like, I don't see it. And I'm like, no, right here. You see this piece of metal that slid over in front of the tang? They're like, what's the tang? I'm like, just give me the knife. But that's exactly it, you know? Like, non-knife people, they, they if they don't know how to operate a knife, they love that assisted stuff because it yeah. does everything for them. And that's uh, the whole reason why I carry a slip joint half the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, a good part of the time because pretty much everybody knows how to operate a slip joint. I would hope. I would hope. Yeah. I would hope. My you know, hope's and, and that's why if somebody asks to borrow a knife, that's what they get. They get the slip joint. Because everybody <laughs> knows what a jackknife is, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. I mean... You know what's funny though? There, there's a lock out there that seems to be universally easy for knife people and non-knife people to use. Can you guys think of it? Back lock. But no, lock. the access lock. Oh, I can't. I sense. can't even begin to tell you how many times I've had. I've handed a customer a knife that they weren't even aware of Benchmade and how the lock worked, and they looked at it and they saw those two pins, and they put two and two together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I would have thought that. I would have said a backlock. Yeah, I said a backlock for yeah, sure. Yeah, backlock's another one too, but that's been seen since, you know, the Buck 110. Everyone well, pretty exactly. much knows what that buck is. Knife. Every, I mean, there again, I think everybody pretty much knows what a buck knife is, you know, for yeah. the most part, so. I'm going to do a video on why the Buck 110 sucks. Please do. <laughs> I'm I 100% do agree. Yeah, when you get, well, because I've realized, like, like Pete over said, Nada makes fun of me. He's like, bro, you don't get, and so does Alchemy One, Clint. He's like, you don't get half the flack I get when you talk shit about, like, a buck. And I'm like, that's because I just, I'm a redneck from the South, I guess, and people think that I want to say shit about it. <laughs> I'm going to make a whole video and see how many Randys I, how the Randys I can get out to come and yell at me. But I feel like the buck. I think I think it's outdated, that's all. I agree. The Buck Alex, 112 stop. Slim, I did review on the Buck 112, the Slim Ranger. Yep. That is by far my most watched video by least and bound. I that would be a very popular video with people. I have to say, we got the Slim Pro in uh, of the 110, and that is a very, very nice modern adaptation on that knife. The only thing I wish, I wish they would have done is they would have moved that back lock up to the middle position so you could close it one-handed. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. it. You're yeah. supposed to close it with two hands when you're skinning deer. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 yeah, I don't know. I got a bad – I understand – here's my thing with Kershaw. If you're marketing to the non-knife community, right, like the everyday Joe that's going to buy the, you know, the clamshell package, that's cool. Do that, right? But don't – don't blast my – don't put up on, you know, Instagram about your assisted direct food or whatever R.D. Martin design. And then when I ask you, there he is, blister packs, baby. Christmas <laughs> packs. <laughs> Hollywood Did, Christmas packs. Didn't yeah. you do a video on that a long time ago, Gerald? On what? The blister pack Kershaw's. Those ones that were out during Christmas time. Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, yeah, those, those, those Christmas packs. Kershaw's, dude, I, I still get comments on that video. That is like my second most watched video and Ganzo. Ganzo. I, I mean, yeah. dude, I don't even have 900 subscribers. My one Ganzo video is like over 9,000 views. Oh my god. Wow. 
Is oh. it really? That's yeah. Great. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's insane. That's okay. great. Okay, here's I'm not worthy. I don't have a video that's even close to that. <laughs> it was on this and the 21, the 31 and the 21. All I did is just talk about them for like seven or eight minutes. And right. I mean, that, that thing's still getting views like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And the, there, there's the market right there, right? That whole, uh, the Christmas pack, the Buck Christmas pack where you did it. What's I cannot remember, but what did that uh test? What did that steel test out at? It wasn't 440. No, it came. Uh, it it's it's so close to 14C 28N. I mean, so That's, close, okay. it's almost identical. Right. So it right. was a twenty dollar pack. I cut with that thing, and it cuts like 14C 28N, like Kurt said it was, and it for twenty bucks, it was a deal. I just actually, I just actually donated one of those to Zach for a giveaway on Zach stuff. Zach stuff. Zach stuff. See, there's a guy that likes to hook up people with benchmates, Tom. <laughs> I told you, Steve. BJ's first in line. You son of a bitch. But none of you will ever actually get it. Steve? Just letting you know now. That's okay. Huh? Don't worry. I, I'm not buying any more benchmates, anyways. I sold all mine. I have a hard time finding a Benchmade that I want to buy. Yeah, I agree. I, I All of their designs are so bland to me. They don't do anything for me. They don't add any cool steels. And even if they do add a cool steel, they heat treat it to 55. I was really tempted to get that Benchmade Bug Out Gold class when I was talking to you guys that night. That was cool. And then uh, I realized I was drinking. Thank you! <laughs> 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 but Alex, it has glow in the dark C Tech. It does not have glow in the dark. It's yes. not. Have you ever have you seen it? It does glow. No. Tom knows they glow. It does glow. That was like one of the first videos that that when it was out, you can like charge it with a flashlight. No, you 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 link me and you show me that video because I will. I will prove you wrong. I I, I want to see this glowing C Tech. I saw it. It's like one of the secret things that they don't tell you about, but it yeah. glows. My, okay, see, ZT, ZT puts it out there. Benjamin is like, you got to figure this out on your own. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to buy two. It's an Easter egg in your $700 bug out. It's an Easter egg. <laughs> Here hey we guys, go. I just, this just popped up, and we were talking about Civivis earlier. Have you guys – that's the new Civivis. Yes. Kenna. That's, yeah, that's the new that. Isham design. I think that's a front flipper. Wow. That looks cool. I'm it digging almost, that. It almost resembles the um the uh A A Purvis blade. Yeah. There's the there's that, the, the Isham design, Steve, that actually really, looks like a knife. That that actually is a pretty good looking knife. Yeah, it's all small knife. too though. You know, you know, female lions look like lions, but they're not really lions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're missing a very key component called a dick. So, you know, <laughs> I, I look at that knife like it looks like a knife, but it's an Isham. So it's probably just a paperweight, but we'll find out. Well, you know, this is one of, I mean, it's pretty subdued. Yeah, it's I, very, if you look at it. It reminds me a lot of like a ZT450 or the 460. It's yeah. got kind of like those same curves to it. Yeah, yeah. Tommy, I mean, you're talking about this knife like it's a stripper. Look at you. Look at you ready to go with this, man. It's great. You got to notice the curves, man. You got to notice the curves. Yeah, look, I don't look, look at the curves. Look, 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 look at them curves. There ain't no curves. No one's got curves, right man. There. Right you got, there. You got, you got white girl knives. Look at those things. <laughs> That's when I want to try it, Alex, that headhunter. Yep. It's uh, it's for sale. Oh. Stasa, Stasa 23, my buddy Nick, Stasa 23, he digs that thing hard. That's what um, uh, the casual cutter really liked his, too. Yeah, I, I actually love this knife. It is really well done. Um, for the price, 220 bucks. I want to say this is a great, great, great deal. I'm selling mine for 180 it's like new. You heard it here. Here you heard it here first, folks. If you want that knife, go to Alex's Instagram. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> His shameless promotions right now. <laughs>
Next, next, week, we're, next week, we're just going to have ads for Alex's knife. That's the entire episode. He's trying to save up for playing. There you go. No, but you know what? In, in all honesty, that is a great knife. Um, I really yeah. I really dig it. I like the way it looks. Um, it's very smooth. It's very light, and it's very comfortable in the pocket. It's kind of weird where the end, where the the back of the, 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 the frame kind of has that tip to it. Um, but then I figured out, you know, if you want to get tactical with, like, a three-inch knife, like I'll show you right here. You know, it's it's a it's yep. a thumb ramp. You You're know. a tactical warlord, sir. <laughs> Very yeah. impressive. Very so impressive. If you want to tactically cut your cheese? Um, I always tactically cut cheese. Every okay. time I silent I, fart, right? Uh, stab down. <laughs> I thought I thought I thought it was a silent fart. No, 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 no. It was it was real tactical cheese cutting. I always cut my cheese tactically. Before we wrap this thing up, since we've been going for about two and a half hours now, um, I know, right? This is like a Steve live stream. It's going to keep going. It gets longer every time. It feels like I start, and then I look at it, and I've been going for over an hour. It's like, holy crap. It goes quick. It's a lot of fun. It does. Thank you. Thank you. See, see for those people, see, look, thank you, Big Red EBC. For people who do real live streams, not you, Tom, he understands what I'm talking hey. about. <laughs> Go quick. You look up and an hour's gone by. Then you look up three. And you're like, okay. oh, God. Real quick, speaking of live streams, Blade HQ or Blade HQ, Blade Forums can live stream on their account. They only have 600 subs, but I can't. <laughs> so I'm going to try again here here real soon and, and see if it'll actually go across because that's, that's BS right there. I want to start live streaming the Maximet shit again. Wait, how? I don't understand. You're talking about YouTube? Yeah. Yo, rat them out, bro. Rat Blade. <laughs> they give, they do giveaways, Steve. I, I'm a member on there, so I got to try and get the giveaways. Hey. It's almost as bad as the Spider Call forums. It is. It's very bad. Hey, I know it's late, but every every Saturday Night Live at the end of the show, we do a giveaway, man. We give something away. Hey, I will be there. I will be there next week. It might not be a Sabenza. It might be a Bushcraft field folder, but <laughs> we do okay. something away. Hey, that's fine. We it might not give away Sabenza's, but... Last thing we're gonna we're gonna talk about here before we wrap this thing up. Atomic Edge Sharpening wanted me to bring it up, and BJ wants me to, to ask you, Steve, because he wants to see you uh, get giddy like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> let's let's talk about that shard four V test. Oh, good God! <laughs> he knew exactly how to get me. Fucking, yep. uh, where is it? Where is that shard? Where is that thing? There it is. There she is, right there. What what does he want me to talk about this shard for me? <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I want to. I want to hear about that thing. What do you think about that? That um, was amazing, huh? Yeah, it's it, it. So when Roman said he's gonna send it to me, um, I, I've handled a lot of knives, man. I've been sharpening for I don't know eight or nine years from cooking, you know, like chef knives and stuff like that, and folders. And, um, I've handled a lot of really uh, cool steels. That's what got me into it was the sharpening. Um, and so it was cool. He was sending it. I, w I was happy to do it. Um, but I didn't really have any expectations. Um, I just, I, I knew it was going to be hard, right? Like I knew he did a good heat treat. It was going to be, going to be hard shit. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect it to do what it did. And this is why you saw me in the video kind of hammering home the sharpening so much mm -hmm. because that's kind of my first love. So when like I didn't expect it to do what it did. It was it was very eye opening. It was very surprising. It was very, um, it was it was just fucking wild, man. Somebody hands you a knife that's it's just it's not like anything I've ever touched before. It it it, it didn't. That's why I left the sharpening in the video. Um, I think real time before I sped it up, it took me nine minutes to sharpen. Wow. So let me ask you this. You didn't tell us in the video how much does that knife go for? Um, this in particular, it depends on the steel, obviously, because the steel is a different cost. But I want to say he sells these for around 400 or less. Okay. It's not bad at all. No, I want to say there. Now, this is a pro, like, this is like his, this is a shop knife. So this is. Yeah. That was his prototype before he messed up his hand. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is. 
<laughs> yeah, well, this is when he was like, this is like he nailed the heat treat. This is a shop night, literally. So, I mean, the ones that he sells, obviously, heavy. I mean, this one, this one actually on itself is great. <laughs> the the grind's great. Everything's fine on it. There's very, there's nothing really wrong with it. Um, he just has a very high standard. Um, but it, 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 yeah, I think he wants. His, I, I want to say he sells them between three fifty and four hundred, depending on the steel. You know, because some of the, he has stuff like he has access to stuff like Nitro seventy seven mm-hmm. steel that's not even in production anymore. Uh, Van Cron, which is like, I don't know. I, I think last time I looked at it, it's like two dollars an ounce. It's like it's really, you know. So he has access to a lot of like kind of crazy shit being there in Switzerland. Um, but yeah, they're not expensive at all. Like he doesn't charge, and he's doing yeah. folders. He's getting ready to do folders and all that. His hands just hurt right now. It's just <laughs> I'm a guy, man, who's into sharpening. This it just it was just wild. When I got the knife, uh, before he had sent it, he was showing us. He sent me a video because somebody asked him about toughness, and he took it and he was whacking like a steel beam. Like this. Oh, yeah. And it didn't really do much at all. There were a couple little nicks in the edge. So before he sent it to me with his one hand, he like threw it on like a stone, you know, like a, a wet, like a tormic kind of thing. And kind of mm-hmm. try to grind it out real quick. So when I got the knife, the bevels were a little uneven. It was like, I don't know, I want to say like 17 degrees per side. So I really, I realized there was something special because for me to take it from 17 degrees to 15 degrees per side and completely sharpen it, it took me about 18 or 20 minutes. Wow. This is 4V at 65 HRC. This is hard, hard stuff. So when it, when, <laughs> when it sharpened that fast, I was like, Man, something's wrong. This ain't gonna cut worth the shit. There's no this stuff's like 420. Like this ain't gonna do shit. You know, and then I start cutting with it in the video and it's just cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. And then it just kept going. And then at the end of it, I was like, you know what? If it's sharpened that easy, it should respond well to stropping. So I was like, you know, fuck it, let's do a shot a strop real quick. So in the video, you literally see me 10, 10, you know, 20 strops. I went to count it to 20. And then I cut another hundred and almost 30 feet worth of uh, carbon with it. So, yeah, yeah it, it was uh, it was cool. So this will be the very first knife I ever am sad to mail to the next guy. <laughs> Hands down. It's that much fun, man. It's, it's a really cool stuff. Atomic Edge said don't quote him, but they're like 280 to 400 U.S. dollars. There you go. Like I said, 350, There you go. Yeah, it's about yeah. the same. Ballpark, yeah. After seeing that test, Steve, I already wanted one of his knives to begin with. I really like his designs, and I like everything he's doing. But after seeing your test, he just jumped to the very top of my list for, for next knives to get. I hope so, man. I mean, like, I hope people are hitting him up left and right for, for orders. He's going to blow up. If I could do it, yeah. If, if anything comes out of his test and people see what he's – you know what I mean? Because it's like you know when you cook for a living. Like, when you, when you see guys that are really, like, putting their guts into something, you want to tell everybody about it, you want to tell your friends about it. So getting this knife in hand, you know, it's 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 like when someone puts that much time and effort, you know, I want to see people in the community who appreciate really well done cutlery, right? To be able to get that, you know what I mean. So it, it, I I hope if anything comes out of this, I really hope guys hit them up and are like, yo, I want one of those knives because he does an excellent excellent job, you know what I mean. And Triple B should be sending me a knife uh, in, in the very near future, so that'll be another one that's gonna go. I'm gonna go ham on. It should be retarded atomic edge says you need to you need to flex the edge a bit more and show it off and uh david says steve will bust nuts and atomic edge goes yeah whittle a nut <laughs> I will whittle a nut I mean, <laughs> like, look i'm all right so i'm gonna i got two more tests i gotta do but then i'm gonna take this knife i'm gonna take it to a very coarse edge and do a test and i'm gonna take it to a very fine edge and do a test just to flex and see what it does um, i don't have any of my really high grit uh stones anymore my diamond stones because I gave them away to my buddy Lee, uh, Bama knife guy, because I don't yeah. need them because I don't have any knives that can hold that kind of an edge because production knives usually don't. Um, but I got some straps. So I'm going to see how far I can take it. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I mean, like, yeah, I'll see what it'll do. I'll see which 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 way it goes and, and what it does. But you guys saw in the video, man. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, okay. One side, this side, and then – 20 passes on a paint stir <laughs> and I was <laughs> handling hair with the grain and against the grain. What was his handle on Instagram, Steve? Do you remember off the top of your head? Yeah. On Instagram, it's K knives underscore Switzerland. That's, That's his, what I uh, thought. Yeah. Someone was asking in the comments. I see that cat's back, Steve. Now, fuck that cat. That's the mean one. This is the, this is the mom. This is, this one's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> 
she's an asshole, man. For a rescue, she's she's a jerk. She hates me. She's, All she's right. Like, she's about to bite my jugular. Look at her. Look at her. <laughs> yep. Look, look at her staring at me. Look. You better watch me get clawed to death on camera. I think that's uh, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for us. Um, before we go, I know we haven't done this yet, but I think we should all drop our Instagram because Atomic Edge is asking for it, and I think it'd be good for anybody who wants to get in contact with us about you know possible you know topics for for the future. Um, I'm at Tom Hosting Outdoors on Instagram, same as my my YouTube channel. Uh, Gerald, you're at Outpost76, correct? Yes. Uh, Steve is at Chef Kalari. That's C A L L A R I, correct? I actually changed it. It's actually at D E Z N U T Z. <laughs> How do I know that? As soon as you said D E Z, I'm like, I know where he's going with this. That's actually my Instagram handle if anybody's looking for me. D E Z N U T Z. <laughs> Alex is at Alex underscore knife box. And yep. big. Red, I don't remember yours off the top of my head. At Big Red EDC. That's what I thought. So that's where you can find any of us. Yeah, Alex's is uh, I underscore don't have a YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, soon enough, soon enough. <laughs> Waiting, Alex. All right. I hope we have a video of yours to talk about for next week. All I'm right. hoping. We'll see. You got some time. Just yeah, about a week. Oh. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Go follow us all on, on Instagram or YouTube if you guys want to, and you can hit us up on Instagram about any um, – um, Wait, wait, wait. You know, Before we go. Before we go, let's yeah. thank uh, Big Red EDC. For Definitely. Coming. I was getting there. Oh, are you kidding me, guys? Thank you. This is <laughs> – I was – when Alex first approached me, I was like, really? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> of course, man. We will 110% have you back again. I would love that, man. This is this is awesome. I greatly appreciate it, guys. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, man. Hey, and then uh, we got to mention uh, the most important women in our lives. Happy Mother's Day. Definitely. Happy yes. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, um, wives. Thanks to my wife. She's the best. Putting up with knife nonsense. Yeah. When you talk about knives for two hours, trying to yep. hit the kid. That's a mother Sorry. right there. I, I want to thank my girlfriend for sitting in the other room for the past three hours texting me. <laughs> Are you guys almost done yet? Yeah. yeah so I'm thank you for putting up with that. Fire up the barbecue. <laughs> nice. Anyhow, if you guys don't already follow uh, Big Red EDC on YouTube, you definitely should go check out his stuff. He posts a ton, a lot more than myself. And so, Saturday nights, Saturday nights. Yeah, live. the live stream Saturday nights. I will be Saturday there. Night live. Yep. Follow Alex on YouTube too. Shut up. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for us. Make sure to tune back in next week. We're gonna do another live stream just like this one. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank everyone for every or for tuning in for the uh, the live stream. It's been awesome chatting with you guys. See you guys next week. Bye.